Hello, Peter. Hello, George. How are you? Good, good. Busy improvising. What's that? Busy bit improvising my life. Uh, because if I was planning it, it would not be possible anyway. So that's why I have candy skin behind me. Makes sense. Hi. How long is this course? Ninety minutes. I think it's scheduled for sixty, but I think. It goes longer usually. I guess I've only been to one, so. Because I have another call coming up in an hour. Yeah. I'm surprised more people aren't here, and I, I'm not sure that I saw a, an announcement for this call. I got the link from Hank, so he's probably coming. Uh, you got it to him from day, uh, today, or? Yes, that was. George, Howdy out. George, Pete. Hello. Howdy, Charles. <sighs> Still recovering from the Rocket boost of anything we had at the first party. Oh, I'm getting some feedback. I'm getting some feedback. Echo, echo. Maybe, is it is your volume up pretty high there, George? Maybe if you bring it down. Then Rob, hello. Hey, Rob. Or check, check, check. No, it's good. It's good now. So CSC, yeah, Collective Sense Commons. It's pretty exciting. I'm excited. Taking its first steps in the world? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rob, I had a really interesting... Oh, go ahead. Uh, Rob, mostly for Rob. Um, I had a really interesting discussion yesterday with uh, Bill Anderson about OGM forum moderation. <clears throat> cool. Um, <clears throat> and he advocated kind of for just subject areas. <clears throat> and I pushed this towards, um, I, I pushed this towards the whole uh, quest. Uh, quest thing. Yeah. And I, I did that on a, <clears throat> without even realizing it was kind of just a gut feel thing. And so um, so I, I'm going to have to recapitulate some of that. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm more drawn to subject areas than quests, but, um, you know, I haven't been on all the calls and where people are. So, yeah. Quest feels a little intimidating. I'm not, I'm not ready to leave Hobbitville. <laughs> but they probably don't have to be either or. Yeah, I I was advocating uh, we want to do a little bit of restructuring of the the OGM forum categories, <clears throat> and I was um, I was advocating to make quests a first first class object more or less, and it it you know it's not it's still not either or but as a first class object it would be pretty much in your face and you know it's a little bit more a little bit more forward than maybe we need as the hobbits. Morning, Judy. Good morning. How are you today? Good, thanks. How about you? Good. I'm on my tablet right now because somehow the link that I got on my computer wasn't the right one. So I'm working to move over to the computer. <laughs> um. 
Um, your, I, your, go ahead, George. Your, your primary or secondary structuring choices is not only a kind of knowledge management issue, but uh, have some interesting implications of our identity, OGM, as a mission-oriented community or a discipline-oriented community. Yes. If we are discipline-oriented, then topics are like in any epistemic communities, around, we organize around certain disciplines or topic areas or subjects. If we are a mission-oriented community, then we probably organized around quest as um, primary. Yeah, um, ex exactly correct, George. And in practice, um, we have been epistemic. And so then um, subject area orientation, you know, just makes sense. I feel like we have a aspiration. OGM has a significant aspiration to be mission oriented around quests, even though, <laughs> you know, I, I think so. So without even thinking about it, without being conscious about it, I, I strongly pushed with uh, on a call with um, with Rob to orient around mission um, as a way of um, as a way of you know kind of uh, expressing and extrapolating that into being, uh, even though that's not really where we are yet. Yeah. But if it's aspirational, then the forum structure can help bring people along. That's yes. that's kind of where I was feeling it. Yeah, and that's, yeah. And conversely, it may just annoy it people. Might. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, so, fine a fine line between. So, I, yeah, definitely. I, so I guess that's why I wanted to bring it to the, the steering folks here, because, you know, it's like, okay, here's a way that we could, you know, even with the forum kind of be mission oriented. But that requires backup from, you know, everybody kind of, you know, in the front lines and saying, you know, okay, let's start having missions. Let's, and I guess, you know, I, I felt a little bit of that energy. I felt a lot of that energy, significant last week on this call. That's why I, I felt it. I felt it. I felt it. I felt it. Expressing it. There she goes. That was me <clears throat> turning off the duplicate. <clears throat> yeah, no problem. So I have to observe that I think we all think that this is the right time and place for the call, but I don't think that other people do. <laughs> it, it works for me. <laughs> well, I, the, the Jerry and the collective next folks are not here. Um, well, we and and, it's, and oh. it's now eight after the hour, so I think yeah. it's well, not we can a change little it. late. Um, I had some thoughts about this organization question that you were talking about before I got connected properly. And, and I think it's almost like we need multiple layers, not layers, that's the wrong word, multiple replications of OGM when we think about it, because I think there are thought domains where people who are interested in pursuing similar extensive discussions and zones of thought want to continue that like metacots or whatever might be representative groups and there are also um, more action oriented groups where they want to work together to do something whether it's a project or multiple projects um, and that's a different array of people and so it's almost like Maybe we need meta tags or something for all of the people in terms of the different dimensions that they want to participate in or different ways to look at the framework. You know, if you're looking at it for ideas and pursuing cognition, you'd look at us, you'd cue that word in, and that would filter out a lot of the other things that might be distracting to you. So, meta tags. Yeah, meta tags. Yeah. 
I, I like the idea and I, the, the way that the initial design we set up did it was actually just top level categories. So you'd have an action category quests and, and then, a, you know, discussion area philosophy or, or epistemics or whatever. Um, the, the tag, I, I, the tag thing would be really cool, but I don't think our, any software, our software is not generally more software and you, you, uh, UI UX is not quite there yet to, to do good filtering like that. Even though this late date, <laughs> you kind of wonder why. There's also a third dimension, which I guess is actually just the network of humanity in terms of how people find one another. Um, and so that's kind of the challenge. I think if we don't have meta tags or something like that, then then maybe we need topic rooms or something. And they may spring up all over and they might be community-based or state-based or federal-based or global. Um, but that framework of connection. Well, and I don't know if there's some idea of, of circles of depth or of engagement, but I could see where maybe I want to quest on one topic but I just want to learn from some smart people and watch the discussion on topics two through seven. And so how do I, how do we distinguish, you know, I'm, I'm full-time running my company like a mad person. Um, so I don't have time, unfortunately, at this point, in, you know, my next couple of years to, to do a lot of quests, but I love the community and I want to engage and support where I can. Um, I would just echo that or part of that, what you said, Rob, in regard to how I've been so far in terms of my own bandwidth and focus on other things and, and entering and really um, knowing what's going on and, and um, orienting in the discourse space so far. So you kind of jump in and right away, there's all these kind of big chunks and different. So yeah, and that's, I know that's not and that's working or, or not working as much. Well, it's 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 more. Uh, if I heard you, uh, I mean, what what came out? Yeah, for me is is just my attention. Uh, what I I referred to last night as uh, attention economy. You know, you know, just bandwidth. Um, for sure. Combined with you know, the thing itself and how it is structured, and then what's the like learning curve? Anyway, I didn't want to grab the mic too much, but just wanted to underscore. No, that. I, that, I think that. you're on. I think you're on point. I was curious whether you thought the a forum like discourse aid, aids that or or hinders that for me um, for me it helps because i can do it asynchronously oh yeah i mean <clears throat> i don't know if we're getting totally off track or forking the road here um i think the forum itself the um, affordances of the platform itself are probably marvelous um p potentially but then it's, it's sort of how it's set up and I think I wanted to be involved, but for various reasons, wasn't in the kind of initial organizing of the topic areas and channels and so forth. So I might have done it a bit differently or had other ideas, or I have such ideas in even in coming in and approaching what I see is still a bit chaotic um, because I haven't took the time to tune in properly, you know? So there's kind of all these, these thoughts I can offer in response there. I have a feeling we're kind of losing another thread that we're leaving un unfinished, but anyway. <laughs> but I see I see a lot of potential in the matter most in, in combination and increasingly now in Miro um, and other re related type of visualization environments that um, can start to mirror and, and cross link and, and allow this kind of navigation this is where I'm at, the flow, the navigation between all these things and being able to leave, uh, well, trails, breadcrumbs, flags up and so forth. Yeah, interoperability. Navigation and interoperability is kind of a uh, holy grail of uh, the quest in many community for 
coherence and collective sensing and meaning making. But uh, in my experience, uh, uh, people put the tools uh, in front of, it's like putting the carriage in front of the horses, if you focus on the tools, uh, it can uh, enable and liberate some energies and opportunities. Uh, but my sense is uh, maybe because of my bias that I acknowledge that I'm a community builder. I think that if we build strong uh, communities of practice, communities of co-creation, or at least communities of inquiry, interest, uh, those communities will bring forth the need, the expression, the specification of the requirement from the human system side that can then be met with uh, emerging and uh, proven tools, approaches from the tool system side in an ever unfolding spiral or double helix. But driven by the human aspirations, individual and collective. Something just came to mind, but maybe this is useful, I hope so, which is using Slack, for example, as an example, I had a, a couple of years ago in a, in a team collaboration situation where, and so I, I guess before I go into that, the idea of community compared with, in contrast to somehow distinct from perhaps in, in certain ways, a team. Um, and that aspect of a team to go on quests and, and uh, missions and, and stuff. Um, uh, and the, and the, the case where one integral team member just wouldn't use Slack. So I don't know what else to say, but that happened and it, and it kind of sticks out as something that just um, prevented progress. So it's a, I guess it points to the buy-in, relative buy-in engagement within certain tools and platforms and um, the relative um, need to rely on everyone or to one extent, everyone engaging. Or, Net or, network is effects. It, or is it okay to have, you know, 10, 10 areas, 10 platforms, 10 tools, and people pick the three or four that work for them. I don't, I don't know. Well, that's so natural and, and, and reality. Right. So I'm with you if you're advocating for that or, or, or not, that's, out, that's what we have. And, and, and I'm fine with that. I mean, I'm, we're all, each of us sort of like that. It's a PLM, uh, personal learning network, different names for it. Um, Uh, whatever works. I, I was going to say something else, but anyway, that's what, one of my mantras, whatever works. Yeah. I, I told Peter that I'm not a fan of the email and the email list. I just, it's hard for me to keep on top of it, but other mm -hmm. people, that's, that's their bread and butter. Oh, I, I know what I was going to say was as long as there are, and there are, I mean, there are some of us here that are cross pollinating, that are the bees going around and, um, you know, with the flow. Um, and bringing the, the, the light bits for it to grow. How about that? Um, yeah, there has to be connectivity and in, in interactivity. Across, across networks? To, to some extent, again, you know, according to who and what rules and what are the you know, re requirements or metrics or, or whatever, um, mm -hmm. that's all open. <laughs> global mind. <laughs> so Peter, do you want relative just to the discourse and the 
categories do you want to, it seems like we're not gonna get the quorum for that today. Yes, I agree. Um, and, and I'd also like maybe with you and maybe with um, uh, Bill a little bit um, and Charles, if you're interested. Um, take another pass. Yeah, take another pass at it. I think, or, or maybe, you know, before that, I, I think that <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the action versus subject areas discussion would be really good to have with, um, with Jerry and the, and the collective mm -hmm. next folks. Because take take another pass pass at what again? I'm sorry, I was trying to get back on the, the context. I I did a really funny thing. So let me let me show you, or um, you actually let that? me let me post a link. Yeah. Is Peter it and I have been to... Peter and I have been talking about uh, changing the the categories and subcategories in the discourse. Oh, so right, we were, got it. We were going to yeah. present that today. If we had the, the right people, that was the thread you referred to. Okay, yeah. very good. So um, I, I dropped it. Is it? Yeah. Sorry, if if you might throw some of that in in the matter most, oh, then sorry. I could have it yeah. have it up in my map. If Charles there's a channel, you could even make you could even make a channel for yep. for this stuff. Okay, um, sorry. I, I want to propose to folks uh, another part of this call. I was gonna CSC is live. Yay, CSC matter the most at least. Um, I made a channel. It's in in the Zoom chat now. Um, and Charles, I'll put it on your Telegram. Oh, okay. As as you prefer. Well, I, no, I, I'll I'll put okay, the link okay. to the the chat you just posted. I have the, I have the matter most up. Uh, okay, Oops. and so you see OGM calls, right? Oh, now I need to. I made a new channel on, uh, I, I made two new channels on CSC Mattermost. Um, I only see Town Square Meta, do I have to refresh? Sorry to distract you. You probably have to refresh, yeah. I'm a little surprised that you do, but say love you. I don't know how to refresh. Hey guys. Okay, hey, carry Matt. on. Hey Jay, hey Lauren. That's what happened. We were, we, uh, we were in the, uh, we were in another room. Yeah. <laughs> we're really? going, where is everybody? Yeah, same, <laughs> same over you here. In? Because I yes. went in a room that was empty at one point, came to this one, and then I sent you guys a note because I couldn't figure out why you weren't here. <laughs> well, Judy, okay. thank you so much for uh, facilitating the facilitators. This is awesome. And now, now Matt and I don't feel so lonely. Modern technology. And, and likewise. What room uh, were you guys in? Were you in your room, Jerry? Or? We, no, it wasn't my room. I thought, And I thought there was usually one consistent link from Collective Next that we were using. So yeah. I think what happened was, is there was a standing meeting on our calendar since the very beginning of time. And that was the one that Jerry and I used and Hank probably sent out a new one to all of, all of us. So uh, yep. we'll, we'll have to get that, um, you know, yep. cleaned up. I was telling Jerry though, that um, uh, given the work that Hank is doing, you know, inside of Collective Next um, and, um, you know, some of his development goals that we have for him, he's, we're probably going to lose him as, um, kind of our administrator of of these things so we're going to have to figure out you know how to you know how to keep this system going and um but we'll that's like one of those tactical issues that will come up um that we should address before the new year so it's good to see you all um and i'd love to <laughs> I'd, I'd love, I, I see the link to the the collective sense commons uh matter most uh, in the chat, which is awesome. And I, I really like Mattermost. I'm a, I, I, like going back into it, Pete was like, oh yeah, I like Mattermost. It's so, it's like sweet. And once you figure out how to work with channels, which is not the most transparent thing, the interface is nice and it feels really comfortable. And then Matt and I were just talking about what makes a quest. Like uh, what, what are the artifacts that let people know we have quests? How do we do more than have, like a quest is more than there's a thread on discourse named whatever this quest is. Because uh, I think that once we have shaped up quests, then we can have a quest on the food and soil system, we can have a quest on education, uh, we can have a quest on neighborhood uh, economics, and probably several others, and then we'll all be like, oh, okay, we can wander over to those meetings, and those, those groups can have their own separate calls, etc. So. And, and then Rob and I, so I, I want to point out the CSC um, uh, channel link there. Um, I, my, my suggestion, my proposal, um, my offer, gift, um, 
uh, is that uh, it would be awesome to use the Mattermost channel uh, instead of the Zoom chat um, for for right now. For, for well, for calls forever. Yeah, um, if it's for, for all our calls. <laughs> um, my only and, problem with using an alternate chat, which I I love the idea, is that I have my windows set up so that I can see y'all and chat, and it all works transparently. <clears throat> and that's hard once I start using a separate chat. That, that's my only beef with it, because I know that everything else about what you said is better. Yeah. Why, why is it you can't, you can't just have um, two windows? Um, I don't have a big screen. I've got a laptop where ah. I do everything. And uh, so, yeah. Charles, interestingly, has the opposite problem. Uh, he zooms on his phone. Phone. I think. Right. Yeah, so, I'm still plagued by this issue. And, and I, I'm I on a laptop, so. I haven't pursued it enough, but basically I'm cut off between the Zoom chat and my map and, and other visual stuff on a big screen. So if I have a bridge such as Mattermost, Telegram works or a Google Doc, this is what I've been doing just to jerry rig it lately. Yeah. It's a jury rig or Jerry Bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lauren, go ahead. Um, me, now might be the time to tell the tale of the transfer from Facebook to Keybase. So some of these little teeny things <laughs> that you think are just going to be super easy like oh. we had a group chat and we we're just like, oh, you know, we, we should really be talking on a privacy enabled platform. So we'll just get everyone to go from Facebook to Keepbase. Mm, good luck with that. Some of these little <laughs> things like, oh, no, 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 we're not going to chat in here. We'll just chat on Mattermost because that makes more sense. And it's totally like, I know you have, like all the reasons are good. It just strikes me as the thing. No one's going to do it. <laughs> Well, I'm just finding trying to click on the links that you've put in the chat. Um, it's requiring me to open accounts or do various things to even get in. And I'm not sure whether I'm even in the right place. <laughs> yeah. And, and Peter, I, I went and I just logged in and registered and all that stuff. And common sense commons, you're almost done. Please verify your email. Yep. Um, and it's, I'm getting nothing to my inbox. And you know, what's so funny is when Gene did that whole thing with whatever that other platform was that he wanted everyone to put their person uh, in. Kumo, I think. Yeah, it was Kumo or yeah. it was the yeah. other one that Libra. wasn't Kumo, it was the other one that he had. Never got an email from it, couldn't find it in my junk email, couldn't find it anywhere. Um, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but um, I think the, um, I think the big machine is filtering out all these little players. Yeah, that's weird. Um, I, it's so it's it's going to be a process, um, like Lauren says. You know, it, I so I don't suggest that like oh my god we all have to be here or we all have to be there. It's going to be messy, and if we can kind of move over, hopefully fast. But if we can move over to uh, the Mattermost, that would be awesome. I, I and, do think. And Matt, of course, I can help you get get. It does work. Ready. It, it works quite well. Um, yeah. There should be ways to resolve those issues. We're going to have, I think we're going to have though, we're going to have these same issues with adoption for everyone, right? right. And I think, yes. I think this idea of, you know, an onboarding kit and, and, and a, you know, a help desk and, you know, all of these things to get people in to our system, whatever that system is, I think it's going to be essential, um, you know, to essential to kind of get, you know, ramping up, you know, yeah, like, like, uh, like Walmart. So, um, because here's, you know, here's the thing that, that I'm noticing about, about OGM is we have, we have human beings in our group that are, want to expand, you know, expand what this thing is, right? Uh, because we all feel like there's a connection to other human beings within within this circle. Um, and a lot of us live in this atmospheric layer and we almost need to build, you know, build the stack from, you know, the highly conceptual all the way down to the, you know, the tangible so that there are, there's the scaffolding to enter into what, you know, what we're doing, right? Um, and I don't mean that just 
I don't mean that just about the technology. I also mean that about um, how conceptual, you know, we are. And George, the conversation we had, you know, just the other day, I mean, we were very much in the clouds and trying to start to pull things, you know, pull things down. Neil um, brings that up pretty regularly in terms say of- again. The stack, Neil the vertical. Davidson brings that up pretty regularly mm -hmm. in terms of that potential stratification. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I agree. I, at the same time, I want to be sure that it's, it's still an open process where people can aspire to be in a different level. And maybe there's an observer period or something that lets them get a sense of how it's going. Because having been in groups of long standing, if you bring in new people, if they're natural adapters, they just automatically do that. And you don't notice that you have a new person in the group, but other people can be, they get kind of lost. And I, I think it's, the, it's about the scaffolding, Judy, more than it is about determining where people latch on, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, we've often talked about this thing almost being like a coral you know, like when you seed a coral reef, you put certain building blocks in place and then you let whatever grows around it, grow around it, wherever it can find its, you know, its roots. And so I think what this group's job is ultimately, and this group can always change and grow and all that kind of stuff is I think to focus on scaffolding, you know, and focus on the, on the you know, kind of the ways in and how do we build that scaffolding as quickly as possible so that all the stuff that's starting to, to, to bloom right now actually doesn't, doesn't leave because it didn't have an anchor point, right? And I think, mm -hmm. Rob, you were talking about this early on when you first came in to the group is like, how do I, I mean, how do I start? Should I, should I even be here, right? And thank God you stayed, you know, you stuck around, but, you know, I think we're at, you know, we're, we're going to be at risk if we don't find, you know, find the right architecture for people to just, you know, to link on wherever they want to link on and also to crawl up and down and left and right kind of thing, right? Can I just offer, you know, I shared the video just now. Put it in. Oh. You somebody else need, need to go first? Uh, Charles, then George. I just wanted to invite everyone to check out the Miro board that um, has sprung up and has become a uh, collaboratory. And um, it's just kind of a lot of things are, are clicking in, in, in my mind together about this type of, and maybe this is a good just starting point to have an environment and uh, it's chaotic. It's, you know, it requires more narrative and, and the kind of weaving of the parts together for coherence to, to make sense. Um, that's evolving already. And just to say, um, this could be a place, this type of, of uh, visual environment could be a way to invite people in and to be creative as well. Maybe that's enough for my side. I don't want to get too off track, but um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a, to visually represent this stuff it might be a good way to go. George, then I'd like to jump in. So, so when, uh, Matt, when you said uh, scaffolding, uh, I couldn't resist to put in the chat uh, scaffolding for the sake of what? Because uh, we love our tools. We all have our preferred uh, channels, media. But when a new person come in, uh, the his or her question can be, uh, should I be here at all for, for the sake of what? Like when I am going to a new community, I'm interested, what's the purpose that will inform me uh, whether I can or how can I best invest my energy in a given uh, group, because there are so many possibilities for coming together and scaffolding, uh, using this or that channels. So one can decide to not to decide. I mean, not to decide with some intellectual or ideological means of purpose, but simply here in this group, there are folks whom 
I resonate with, I feel some affinity with. So I'm going to hang around. Uh, and uh, I also think that if we hang in long enough, the organizing and federating patterns will uh, emerge. Uh, but there is this, not but, and there is this uh, movement from bottom up, like idea emergence, uh, project emergence, uh, and they can be uh, accelerated if that's not the only movement that we recognize, the bottom up, but we also recognize what I feel um, Pete is representing to, to some extent, which is deliberative design. So um, deliberative design and spontaneous emergence are not uh, enemies. They are dance partners. And uh, my passion is um, for um, standing uh, in and um, holding space for the highest potential of the community that I uh, believe will come out from this dance of uh, design and emergence. So yes, let's do uh, scaffolding, try out this and that tools, and at the same time, uh, keep also the conversation going about for the sake of what, what, uh, what we try to accomplish, uh, what are the quests and projects that are energizing, that, that are giving the juices for the vehicles that will move us forward. I totally agree, George. Uh, Matt, you're muted. Why don't you go ahead and then I'll jump in. Yeah, George, I, I really appreciate um, I really appreciate those questions. And I think, you know, from the workshop, what I what I sort of drew out of those conversations. Uh, one is I do think that we that there is a foundational building block that we have to get done, which is around sort of um, which is around sort of our our charter, our meta narrative, our Magna Carta, our you know statements of intent, you know our manifesto, whatever that whatever that thing is, um, to articulate some of these things in a in a more formal way, and it can be a fluid document that's always evolving. But but the summary that I took out of that workshop and from these conversations are first and foremost the people that have come to OGM believe that. Um, that human beings are in a place of risk right now. And that that risk is, um, is being displayed by both social and ecological you know, collapse, right? That those, those things are, are true. I think that people would sort of say that those things are true. And I think the part of OGM is that we, there's a belief, um, there is a belief that only together can we deal with these issues. And together means that we have to be able to sense what's going on at a much bigger levels uh, or at multiple levels. Um, we have to become holistic in our sensing. We have to have the resources and tools and time as human beings to, to better make sense of all of those things. And then we have to be able to organize um, that what that sense making into change making endeavors, right? I think that that's that kind of, and so what we're trying to do, the scaffolding that we're trying to build, is scaffolding that allows us to draw in um, st stuff, knowledge, information, feelings, whatever, uh, process that. And, and, and make sense of all of that and, and, and kind of break current frames and think about new frames and then to activate, activate that into, you know, into, the, into the world through you know, kind of change making endeavors. Um, and that's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to construct. And we know that that construction is not just technical but that it's also, you know, it's also social. Um, um, 
so that was my, that's my summary. And um, I know Jerry, you wanted to jump in and go next. I, you know, Judith, I didn't know if you want to add something because you look like you were, had something out of the tip of your tongue as well. And I know George, you're, you're there too. So why don't we go uh, Judy, Jerry, and then George. I'll defer to Jerry. I got sidetracked. Okay. And... Thank you. Okay. Um, so I kind of want to go back to the practical question of how many platforms and what are they? Because I, uh, I already have the Google group, Discourse Forum, now Mattermost. Uh, Charles started a Telegram uh, OGM uh, list, uh, which I'm on. Uh, and I'm in contact with multiple of you through, um, uh, what was the one we were just talking about? Uh, Keybase. So I'm, you know, so I have, so I have Keybase open. I have like all these things open. And at this point with Mattermost open, I don't know two questions practically. I don't know what should go on the Google group and what should go on the Mattermost. And then because we're in a chat, a channel on Mattermost right now called OGM calls, but we're in a very specific OGM call, we're mixing this chat with the general purpose chat. So, and, and this call is meant to be for structural design or, you know, or, organizational efforts around it. So we might create a new channel for this call separate from OGM calls. Uh, and then, uh, so, Two thing, two problems here. One is we're going to lose a lot of people when we have too many, uh, too many channels. We're just, we're just going to lose people who don't have the the, the skill to navigate a whole series of, of different channels. Uh, can't, don't make their way through the filters. Like can't find the, the confirmation message in your email inbox. That's that's like a deal breaker for a whole lot, whole bunch of people because trying to resolve that is really hard. Um, and then I would love to find what's the natural path for anybody walking in? Do we tell them you're gonna sign up now for seven platforms and good luck finding them? I don't think we do that. I think we need to settle into a, a more normal uh, pattern across these kinds of things. And, and if we end up with a practice of, okay, don't ever use the Zoom chat, always use the chat over here, that's good. But then we sort of need to enforce that because I'm sort of so grooved on using the Zoom chat constantly that I'm gonna to have to retrain my little animal, animal brain to do that. Uh, so. That's my pragmatic question. And if you don't mind, I'll just interrupt the, the higher level talk to go to Pete, because I think Pete has done this for a really long time and has some interesting answers here. I don't know if they're really interesting, but I've, I obviously I've thought through that a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot. Um, uh, I think, so I, I think I wouldn't really use the OGM mailing list, except maybe for announcements. Um, and then, and then I would hope that folks get into the the Mattermost for uh, the ch the replacement for Zoom chat, and and we shouldn't use the Zoom chat, and gently guide people over. Oh, here's the link that you you know. So things like things like missed uh, email confirmations and stuff. I at, maybe I'm I'm a, as a or the uh, you know a uh, Mattermost admin might be able to just kind of fix that behind the scenes. So there's definitely help desk stuff that needs to to help people. Uh, do stuff, but and, and then I think the Telegram um, OGM thing could could get replaced by Mattermost as well. Um, and actually, Charles and I are talking about getting the Kiko Lab uh, calls their chat replaced in the same way. So there's already a Kiko Lab Roundtables uh, channel for for calls. I think I, I made the decision. You know, I made a decision. Um, it may or may not be the right one that. Um, OGM calls are, I, you know, I, I think si since uh, the, the two kinds of calls don't overlap in time, uh, you can have them in the same channel. And I think that's additive for people. I think it's, you know, um, people will be on one call or the other call and they'll scroll through the chat or they'll, you know, have a bunch of unread messages and they can either read them or not. Um, I think clustering things together um, reducing the number of, of spaces as much as possible is a good idea. But it, it is also true that right now we've got a discourse and a, a mattermost, and those are both, I think they are both additive together. Um, discourse is good for lots of semi-persistent conversations that go from days to months, or days to weeks to months. And mattermost is, you know, seconds to minutes to, you know, hours or days kind of. And I think Charles is going to add to the conversation the Miro board. I'd like to go to Judy, then Charles. Well, I was just going to comment that, that the OGM mail list 
is problematic because it threads with all of my other email and so I can't possibly keep things connected. So the move for me to discourse was greatly preferable. Um, and I don't think I need alerts for every post on discourse or other networks because again, they feed into my stream, but my discipline has to be that every day or every two days or whatever, I'm gonna to go to discourse and pick the threads I want and follow them. Um, it, it takes some of the spontaneity out of it. And there's some people in the group that really like to respond the instant they got the email. And, and so that's a pattern shift and maybe they run concurrently and people self-select um, where, where it fits for them. Mm -hmm. For me, I've got too many different streams going to have it just all pile into my inbox. And, and I won't make a thoughtful, I'll, I'll skip it because I can't dive into the history right then. Right. So I yeah. think this is an important discussion pragmatically. And I think for a lot of the people, they're very centered on a specific topic and they'd rather just talk about that topic. So I think this architecture that we're discussing is really important for people to find their affinity group. Mm -hmm. And then within that affinity group to find their level of engagement or level of discussion. And we've got all the outside ones too, like Metacog or mm -hmm. things of that sort that Piragaji that are also going. And so there's a, a, a dimension of this where we'd want to figure out how we connect to those, you know? Exactly. And my, my vision of the future would be that not only will all of this be there, but there will be a massive network of active projects that are coalitions of individuals and getting that architecture in place before we have much going <clears throat> is super, super important because you wanna be able to query that and connect with other active groups that are working on similar things and share the things that work and so forth. Um, briefly, before I go to Charles and George, um, I have the opposite problem of you, Judy. I turn off Mattermost notifications because there are too many of them. So I, don't, I won't be alerted the way I'm alerted within emails. And then I get like forum, you know, discourse things show up in my email. So I get a lot of email, but, but at least I know that email I see all the time and every day. So I'm, I'm busy just trying to, you know, ninja filter through all of that. Um, and then second quick comment before I go forward. Um, ironically, this is a deep OGM question. Like what we're talking about here is like <clears throat> where conversations happen, how we find our way to them, how we don't get overwhelmed by them how they can welcome newbies without overwhelming them with, hey, you get to log into seven new platforms. This is a very important OGM conversation. Charles, then George. Yeah, I agree. It's really important and I'm so glad to be here. I, leaving aside the comparing between different platforms and types of channels and so forth, just zooming in or drilling into the repository aspect of um, wanting to store and make accessible the Zoom chats, for example. And there was some some chat here in the Mattermost channel about, um, if I understood, you know, not just the comments and notes um, um, from Carl, but actually from the chat. So, and what I was proposing was to, to treat it like a, an archive and date, have channels that are dated. And so you could have, you know, because the whole Zoom chat from a, a long session, it's a lot of stuff. Do you need more than that? Do you want those woven together if, if they're if they're if the calls are not concurrent? You know, in the same channel. It's not, and then uh, last thing is Pete. You had a comment here. Yeah, at some point we can cut each particular call into a wiki page. It's never going to happen. Can we can can we have a process it, a protocol to right away? It to, will to, because uh, I'm going to automate it. Okay, so and you're Wik also... wikis are, wikis are easy because you can just just crank out pages and then you know what the page is because it has an address. The problem with channels, as I just replied to your comment in Mattermost, is is that if we have a a, diff a new channel for every call, we're going to all go crazy, or at least I my my brain will explode. Um, George, yeah. did you want to jump back in? Uh, you're muted. There we go. So uh, I hope that uh, you guys can put up 
with my addiction to ask uh, meta questions like um, and also not only ask but uh, also bring my reflection from a meta perspective like um, Matt answered very clearly my earlier question about for the sake of what uh, you described, Matt, uh, the sense of manifesto, even if it's not very formal, agreed by everybody, but we do have a, a shared sense of uh, what is our take on the dire situation of the world and that uh, we want to do something about it and we know that we can do it only in some form of collaboration. So now what I heard, um, I heard it as, um, as the DNA of, uh, of OGM. And then uh, from the DNA to a viable baby, a new living being, uh, there is the process of um, differentiation of the organs in the embryo, the different uh, with the different functions. That's how life is carrying itself forward through differentiation and then integration, those functional roles, functional entities and this is what I ob I'm observing. It's happening to some extent here in, in this conversation, although not very consciously. We tend to focus on the channels and the tools because this is our, basically it's our, the immediate survivability we will depend on whether we find a, a tool ecosystem, whether we can create a tool ecosystem with sufficient with sufficient coherence so that people don't get um, confused, discouraged and, and live. Uh, we are uh, going to lose not only people, but uh, also the possibility of um, sustaining a coherent uh, community sense-making uh, if we don't identify and set some clear guidelines about what tools to use for what function. And uh, Pete, you already started uh, articulating that. So this is what I feel that we need to agree on and canonize, I mean, to set in stone, not forever, but at least for something that we have a clear uh, set of guidelines that we use this for that. And these are complementary and how they relate to each other. So how can we build the synergy across the different channels? But that's still all this only the tool system side. There is also the differentiation of uh, functions from the human slash social system side. Then um, Pete, you introduced uh, the probably it came out from your conversation with others in the steering group, then you introduced the, the moderation team. Now, the moderation team, uh, as I referred to in one of my notes on the forum, it's not one function, but a family of function that hopefully over time will uh, be differentiated as some people step forward as weavers, those who are uh, connecting uh, meaning, uh, connecting uh, posts and many other functions within the, the moderation team. Uh, so, um, and, and also the, the projects, um, the projects are like the vital energy that uh, carry the whole thing forward. And, and the last thing I, I want to say that when we Think about the tools and, and channels. Uh, I would like to ask us to 
think about that not only from the perspective of we as individuals, but also we as a collective entity. In other words, uh, what is needed for developing our collective intelligence, not only just a metaphor, collective intelligence, we say, okay, we are already, already have a collective intelligence. That's not quite so if we would consider the arts and sciences of collective intelligence in which it's not just a metaphor, but models of uh, sense making and uh, methodologies of interaction. And there are people among us who know something about uh, this. So this would be another uh, stage in the differentiation process. I would be happy to contribute to that if and when a need will be expressed and articulated by somebody else also besides me. Um, let's go to Judy, but two things. Um, remember there's a raise hand feature in the software. So I, I try to catch people's eye, but just click on the raise hand and I'll pay attention to that. And then I'd love to hear uh, from uh, Rob, Scott, uh, Lauren, people who haven't had much of a chance to jump in and see what you're thinking about this. Go ahead, Judy. Well, <clears throat> I was just thinking that even for the purposes of the discussion, that would be helpful to stratify a little bit because we're right now kind of hopping back and forth between the full scope at the most complex to the simplest for the lowest level, lower entry point access. I don't mean simpler or something, but, um, and I think each topic is worthy of some focus. So I was just going to suggest that we contemplate um, making notes of the topics we want to come back to if they're interjected in adjacent space to the main topic, but a little bit of flow dialogue management because it's hard to get to a point of consensus if you digress regularly. And I love the digressions, they're always rich, but. <laughs> Um, Scott, Rob, Lauren, do you want to jump in with anything? If not, I'll go to Matt. Go ahead, Lauren. I have been thinking um, lately that I think we really need to um, make distinctions, as uh, Scott has said, um, and give a visual diagram of our network. And I think that we need to spread the idea of a, um, the Dungo, Doug Engelbart uh, network, uh, uh, what is it? Um, Augmentation? Yeah, network improvement. improvement. You know what I mean? Or, uh, you know what I yeah. call a rapid learning network that is federated. And that is an entity that encompasses um, many different groups of which OGM is a part and KikoLab is a part and Metacogs and, uh, you know, all of our sister groups. And then if we have that, I think we can start developing tools um, uh, or we can find the tools and spread them that are meant to be um, collective intelligence tools to uh, have a, a network like that. And that's, I think, sort of lacking. And then that can help OGM um, define its distinct boundaries much easier. And when I hear something like manifesto, that seems like a really hard thing to do. It is extremely difficult to write a manifesto for a group. And, you know, like I have a tool that, you know, we've developed at um, Kiko Lab, which is a super simplified version. It's called the Vibometer. And it's just, you know, simply meant to have a group in 20 minutes and can be accomplished where you just have this like levers that you can, um, I'll show it to you. Um, but anyway, um, the point is that I think that uh, by, by it's on having, the Jira board, by the way. Yeah, by having the idea in the visualization that there's a, a larger federated network and then these little groups, we can answer the question like Neil came uh, yesterday to the Kiko Lab Harvest and he's like, you know, I 
I have these abilities and I want to help people and I want to feel part of a community. And I don't know like what group is meant for me. And I think, I thought, you know, it's just like ridiculous that we don't have this basic level of intelligence that any church anywhere, even though flat earthers have more network intelligence of how to welcome people in and make them feel at home than we do. And I feel like we could maybe get a little better on, you know, kind of sharing that. And, and you know, we have tools laying around our network to, to make a, a more intelligent network. We aren't adopting these other tools. We aren't using them. We're not, <laughs> we're not even like, you know, uh, adapting each other's work. <laughs> adopting, I mean. Agree, and it's a bit frustrating. Um, Matt, did you want to jump in? And I'm going to have to bounce to a different call. I apologize. Uh, you're muted. I did. I yeah. did want to. I did want to jump in, and I want to come back to, um, you know, what Judith was uh, was talking about, and um, and I know we lost we lost George as well. We came out of the design uh, event having pretty clear understanding, I think, of some, whether George is talking about organs that need to be developed and grown inside of this system um, or buckets. And we just have to finish the work. And instead of sitting here and proposing, we should do this and we should do this and we should do this, we need to just bucket this thing up into some pieces, call it the manifesto. Lauren, if you wanna be on that team and do that thing, bring your vibometer, bring a group of people and get, get it done. But what we can't do is to say, I want to be on that and this and that, and because we're, we're, we're diffuse right now. And I think we just, you know, if the, if one of the buckets of work is um, to determine what are our initial set of tools and communication vehicles for connecting this community, let's name that as a bucket of work. Sounds like Pete, you're already working on that, but, but let's be formal and say, who wants to work with Pete on getting this done? You know, if someone wants to write the manifesto, who wants to do that? If someone wants to create a quest architecture, who wants to start to do that, right? And, and I don't think we've named too many things. Um, it's just a matter of getting organized and getting to Judith's point, focused on one thing for each group, taking it to the next level, reporting it out to people, <laughs> And then, and, then, and then getting some feedback and going through that. If we do two or three iterations on each of these things as in small teams, we're going to be done in a few weeks. But if we keep having these meetings, I don't think we're ever going to get it over the hump. And I think we need to take it one step at a time. So yeah, onboarding and bringing people and enculturating them, Lauren, into our system like churches do. That should be on our list, but just like agile, you put that below the line because our capacity needs to be focused on the things above the line. And when we get these done, then we move on to the next thing. But, but I, I think there's some basic kind of program management stuff that, you know, we need to get done. Otherwise we're going to be talking to each other into the wind for a very long time. Um, that's, uh, that's where I'm out. Oh, and we jump to Scott, to you, and then um, and then to Peter, and maybe I'll suggest that when you have the mic, if you notice somebody else wants to jump in, then you can you know pass the talking stick to them if if you want to interrupt that, right? Um, a thought occurred to me yesterday as we were working through the Harvest Fest. Um, actually, it was afterwards, and I see the tendency in myself, which is why it was so interesting for me to notice this. I'm sensitive to criticism. I'm sensitive to inclusion. And as a result, my personal webpage has every project I've ever done because I don't wanna choose and potentially exclude something or someone or potentially have to say, you know, these three things are the things that really resonate and matter. And what I've realized is that Having everything is a way of avoiding criticism because now I can say, you know, I need to have this and this and this and this because if I have all of this, 
then no one can point to me and say, well, what about this? And my response to that should be, not right now. Or that's not what we do. And this is what, what I'm feeling is making this so difficult is that we all have this sense of, we want to, we want to make sure that we've thought this through and by so that meaning, well, that means we should grab everything because we're smart enough, we think meta enough. And if you go meta enough, it is everything. And that's too much. And so that's kind of my, I guess my response to you, Matt, in the sense that here's what we have. Here was the first splat from everybody. It was five hours times 29 people. There's, it's all in there. We have all the stuff that Kiko Lab has done. It's all in there. We just need to say, this is what we're gonna do right now because otherwise we are stuck in beta. Yeah, I think, I think that's Scott, it. And, yeah, I think Scott, I, first, I really appreciate like the vulnerability there. If there's, you know, I, I've made the comment about holons, um, you know, that a holon is both a whole and a part of another whole, right? And holons are made of other holons, which are both holes and parts of other holes. And this is not a, this is not about selecting the thing that you will commit to forever. This is about committing to cre advancing the building of a whole, right? And zooming in and out of the building of that whole to recognize that your whole is a part of another part or another whole and your whole is made up of other parts. And so it, you can move in and out and we need butterflies and bees that are cross-pollinating across these things. But we also need to establish start to because we're creating life and life is created by establishing holes that can be then used in other holes that can then be used in other holes and we have to build our you know way up and we also have to build our way down so moving up and down vantage points right being a butterfly across things these are important forms of integration but pausing a long enough to to make is really important. And I think the other thing that's really important is the idea of the crit. The crit in the world of art, right? Is, is it is one of the most important skills of an artist is to put your work in front of other people and to accept the critique, the criticism of others as a form of a gift so that your work can become better, right? And so that openness, and it, you know, this is where doctors stand in front of the, all of their peers and give peer reviews. And you know, this is an important skill and we can get better at that. Um, and that may mean we take something in and reach the limit of our enjoyment of that thing and somebody else has to pick it up and move it forward. So that's you know, the other reason why crits are important because you're also in the process of critiquing someone else's work, you're actually critiquing yourself you're ask, actually critiquing the quality of your own work. So I think, I think if we embody those two things, the idea of a maker, which is real artist ship, and then the critique, and that things are holes and parts at the same time, um, and, and we just are dividing and conquering and redividing and reconfiguring, I think we'll get a lot done, um, recognizing that people can move in like, in like an unconference move from room to room if they're no longer interested, but we at least need to know what we're working on or what we're trying to get done. So um, I know Pete, you were trying to jump in. That's a lot there. Thanks, Matt. Um, uh, I, I wanna talk a little bit about communications and information infrastructure. So, um, I think the discourse forum is better than the mailing list. Um, I think discourse doesn't hold the full spectrum of things, uh, of modalities that we want to inter interact with, um, especially a Zoom call is a good example. The Zoom chat is super useful. Um, and as an implementation, it kind of sucks as chat. It goes away after the call is done. Uh, it doesn't exist before the call starts. 
So um, along with other things, um, I hope, um, and I don't have any expectation that this will ever happen. I think it will, but if it doesn't, that's fine. I hope that we can kind of shift everybody over to Mattermost for um, call chat. Um, then it's persistent, then we can Sorry, search miss, it. Sorry, missed that word there, Pete. What was that? Uh, Mattermost. Sorry, Neil, we've, we've, we've um, and, and let me, um, uh, I'm going to the Mattermost channel right now and if, up if I can just say, I, I trust your judgment, Pete, I don't need to have the technical tour. Um, well, but I, I just missed, missed the, the yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and Pete, Pete, I think this is, I think this is an important dividing line here. Um, and I just want to play facilitator for just a second. Neil says he trusts your judgment here, right? The same time, Pete, when you went said matter most and we're going to go here, Jerry strongly said, I live in this world and this is how I operate, which is different than how you operate and so forth, right? Yeah, I, Jerry said something a little bit different. So oh. I, 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 I appreciate it, Matt. I, so I'm going to, I'm going to acknowledge that I'm going to acknowledge that Mattermost sucks. I'm going to acknowledge that Discord sucks. I'm going to acknowledge that Zoom and Mattermost together, having them on the same screen and trying to navigate that sucks. I'm going to acknowledge that people have problems signing up for Mattermost and then they're, I'm going to hit return while, um, Neil, if you, if you are so in, um, so this all sucks. I agree. Um, having multiple tools sucks. Um, I, I actually, as a person, I have a lot of compassion and a lot of patience for helping people get through stuff. Um, I have a, this weird role in OGM right now that um, I don't even have time to kind of like acknowledge all that stuff. <laughs> Um, He's even contacted me and said, Neil, I've noticed that this email address that's been dormant for 18 months, I know how to fix this sort of shit. Do you want some help? And yeah, I'm going, Pete, I don't I want to go there. <laughs> where, I was, was it, where I was trying to go, though, as facilitator, and I'm, again, I'm sorry to interrupt, is if we said that one of our buckets of work is our communication and information architecture, right? And we said, who is committed to, on behalf of all of us, working through all of the issues to build our communication and information architecture, I would imagine that you would raise your hand and say, I would like to work on this problem, right? Great. Okay, maybe you don't want to work on this. I, I see it differently. Um, uh, I'm, I'm effing doing that. I'm just doing it. You're so doing it. One of, the, one of the things I observe about o, OGM Bless its heart. <clears throat> Bless its wonderful heart. Um, uh, we have a lot of people with um, with thinking and talking energy. Yes. And it's the weirdest thing. Um, each of us is superbly um, able to do things, and we we have a tendency not to do things. So, as an OGM member. Um, one of the one of the energies I channel, and I, I actually love being meta. I love being distracted. I love, you know, being afraid to make a choice, as Scott said. Um, uh, programmers have a way of calling that. Uh, it's called late binding. You know, it's like you don't have to decide something until later. So I'm not going to decide until later. I love doing that. For OGM, the energy I want to bring and the energy I do bring is let's just do it. <laughs> So it is that I have taken on the mantle, whether or not y'all like it um, and whether or not y'all agree. And I appreciate that people kind of do and let me, you know, let me kind of charge ahead. We've got the OGM forum going. Uh, we've got, uh, we've got a Mattermost going. It turns out that it belongs to CS, belongs uh, to CSC. OGM is actually perfectly um, welcome to think that it belongs to OGM. Um, I think it belongs to CSC. I hope C Kiko Lab will think that it belongs to Kiko Lab. It belongs to everybody, right? Um, I would so, just interject. First, first, it would belong to CSC in my view, and but we can flesh out the other part. Yeah, I, yeah. I, so, you know, fed so federation. I, I think. Go ahead, Matt. I, I just, I, 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 I guess I'm trying to get somewhere because you're going back into 
you're going back into the detail about the communication information architecture. Okay, maybe I slowed and down I, a little bit much. Can I, yeah, and I what, I, what agenda, I'm trying to do though, what I'm trying to do is to get us to name communication and information architecture is a priority. Who wants to work on getting that priority? What are the other things are priorities? And let's name, if we can name those things, then we can make work on them. I wanna name a couple of buckets and whether you're working on them, Pete, or those things, but, but people need to think about these things and we need to trust them to think about these things and then to come back and say, here's what we think about these things. We need to do a crit and then we need to go back and iterate it. And then we need to do a crit and then we need to go back and iterate it. And people can come in and out of these, you know, out of these projects, but let's name them first. Because right now, because I'm going back to what Judy, everything is commingled with everything. We need to sort of pull things apart and say, communication information architecture is bucket one. Doesn't have to be priority one, it's just a bucket. Another bucket is the, you know, it's this charter manifesto statement of intent, bucket two. Another bucket is, you know, this, another bucket's that. And once we name those buckets, then people will have something to attach on and put their energies, you know, into. Because yeah, right I, now I we're talking, that. we drop down. I, and so into another way to do it um, is, you know, the way I've, I've started doing it. Um, I think it's, it's fine to name stuff and then do things. Another way to do it is to do stuff and then name them, right? Yeah. Um, and where are we even going to do this? So the, <laughs> the, the 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 really uh, the really so we're we're so, somehow we got ourselves wound around the axle. I was hoping to talk this call about specific um, specific ways that Rob and me and Bill and a few other folks need to morph suggest that we want yeah. to morph um, OGM forum around. Um, uh, there's uh, as part of that work. Um, uh, we came to a, an interesting conundrum, um, which I wanted to bring back to uh, this group, this call. Um, I, you know, for, for lack of a better word, the, the steering folks. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so the top level of that, I guess there's two top level things. One of them is there is a moderation team, um, you know, and we formed it and then named it, and I hope it gets named better. And um, I guess, you know, so, um, so I guess with OGM, I'm kind of, I've been in, uh, uh, it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. So Agreed. I, I haven't said, you know, I wonder what the name <laughs> for um, the chat server should be. It's like, well, actually there's this entity called CSC running by, run by me, and it has a chat server. And I think that's, you know, I, and so I, I break down that that approach breaks down in coming to consensus before we have a thing right but a lot of times having the thing having um having a pot of stone soup starting to cook yeah. is a way for people to go oh i think i will name that soup you know and it's like it's cooking whether you call it soup or stew or whatever right <laughs> um you know and and yes you could go across the village and make another pot of soup but this one's pretty good, you know. So anyway, I've been making the pots um, and sticking stones in them and seeing what sticks, right? So, so it is that OGM Forum has a moderation team. Whether or not we like that idea is a, is a different question. Um, the moderation team uh, had a suggested set of fairly simple, like let's let's have subject areas, um, subject areas, topics. You know, topics is a bad word because, or an unfortunate word because, there's a um, a UI feature of, of discourses topic. So subject areas, let's call them subject areas. Domains. In that, domains, um, in that conversation and full of the promise of, or the thread or the, uh, the discussion, this discussion of quests on the last call, last Tuesday call, um, the, the injection that I had into that discussion was, how about instead of subject areas, we have action areas? And, and we kind of like, <laughs> we kind of like put act our action foot forward and then figure out how everybody is doing action more than we, you know, and make that a top level thing um, instead of having subject areas where 
you know, then we have the philosophy and the discussion and, you know, the naming and, and the action. It's like, you know, there's a top level thing. So the top level thing, we, we, we're naming it quests and discussions um, for quests and proto quests. Um, uh, the, the thing that we ran it, and then I said, well, this is something that we should bring to the steering call because um, unless we all, unless all of us organize around the idea of action as a top level or quests as a top level thing, then it's just gonna be confusing and annoying for everybody. So that was the discussion I was hoping that we would get to on this call um, much earlier so that we could actually have it. But and, and Pete, I think what happened was because we, because we, we are not, <laughs> because we're not organized, yeah, um, we didn't we didn't actually frame this call for what you wanted it to be, um, and if we would have said okay, this call, or maybe we say next call because we've run out of time on this call, is going to be about the communication information architecture, and we have a group of people that want to talk about what's going on in this call. And that's a hole that we want to work. And maybe we say our first priority as the steering committee is just getting that in place. And let's work together on getting that in place. And we leave all the other things aside, including, you know, is the food system really important, including, you know, what's our meta narrative and why are we doing this and all that kind of stuff. We just hold that aside for a second and get some progress, then maybe maybe that's the right thing. The other option is we say that's a thing and there are other things that people are interested in and let's let them do their thing. And then we create the rhythm of people bringing their thing to this stuff. So Lauren, I'd love to know what your, um, what your reaction was all about. No, I really love it. Um, I just think, yeah, I'm totally feeling that um, instead of subject areas, do the action areas. I think that will just set an, like another, like, um, you know, not, not like it's all about, you know, doing, but instead of just talking about the meta narrative, you can have a channel that says, what is the meta narrative? And you make progress on the, the meta narrative. And I think it just will feel more productive. And I also just want to say, the more I think about it, Matt, I I honestly really think that the naming the 10 holidays thing is spot on. And I think it's actually like a far more specific and um, revealing thing than the manifesto. Because every manifesto <laughs> is like some type of, to me, I feel like it's some kind of bullshit on thriveability or wisdom and those don't mean anything where to me the thing about the holidays even though it seems so simple or kind of a little irrelevant it is spot on in terms of like expressing your spirituality and what drives you and what uh that it's a really deep form of self-expression it's also way more fun planning your holidays than it is to write your manifesto which is a good deal of work and it's not fun. It seems to me that we're talking a lot about the combination of culture and action. And they're separate and distinct, but they can be merged if you sort of identify um, our culture is one of blank, 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 inclusion, openness, trust, et cetera, pick some words. And our actions are to apply that culture to a lot of different domains. It might be creating the right networks for communication. It might be enabling the right community action teams, et cetera. But I think there's a, there's a difference between what we wanna preserve in the culture while we do the actual work. And we wanna to move to action because we're all impatient people <laughs> and want to get things done while preserving the culture that got it started. Yeah, and I come back to three buckets. Again, bucket number one, I think, Judy, is defining our culture. Establish maybe it's not defining, it's about establishing our culture, right? Culture are the mental models and shared beliefs of communities of people. 
And I think getting after it through the holiday project or getting after it through pontification of meta, uh, you know, um, of narratives or, you know, um, systems of ethos, whatever those ethics, whatever that is, we're building that. The other thing we're trying to build is an infrastructure. We're trying to build a basic infrastructure that allows us to connect and commune, communicate, collaborate, you know, all of that kind of stuff. We need that done. So once you have an infrastructure and a culture, you know, then to what end and to what end is a set of, you know, real world quests that are creating change in the world that we live in, right? And so I think if we say that our priorities on number uh, day one is infrastructure and culture, first and foremost, and in, if people want to be are out questing right now, because there's lots of people that are doing that, let's ask them what they need from an infrastructure and you know, to contribute to defining the culture that would allow them to be a part of this community. And I think if we, if we deal with those kind of three macro level domains um, at, with equal intensity and take action in those areas, I think we're gonna, get, we're gonna get pretty far. I think if we start to get too far ahead of ourselves though, um, you know, that's when groups of people, like we can, we can talk about everything and it just will take us more time for all of that to emerge or we can subdivide into something smaller where we can see what emerges in each one of those three domains. Um, and I would start there personally to get some traction. Does that feel, do we have some sort of agreement there? And, um, and then maybe what we do is we divide up this group of steering committee members to say, okay, let's each rally around one of those three things. Um, or where would you rally if you had to choose right now, one, two, or three, and you can hold up a finger, right? So Scott, put them up there. One is culture, two is infrastructure, three is um participating in real world quests or defining what the questing architecture, real world questing architecture looks like, where would you put your time and energy? And does everyone understand those three buckets? Okay. Is infrastructure really different than real world quests? Sorry. But... I think I think it is. I, okay. Matt, I, maybe I would I would make an observation that these are all intertwingled, right? Absolutely, because we're they're holes in part they're holes in a part of part of a bigger thing. They're, everything I, is intertwingled, right? If you if you want to go around and get, and take your poll, Matt, but I, I've been having my hand up for a while. I okay. do have something to contribute. If you want to, if 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 you feel like this is uh, if everybody feels this is useful, then go ahead and look at people's fingers. Sorry, I don't know. Charles, I don't, well, it's, be, it's, before, hard to, it's hard to see you, Charles, against your dark background without your lighting. I think no, we could, we could, we could see him. See I, I, and, I and go for him. it, Charles. Just, go just, for it. just an observation. The, the, the bit that's missing from the culture, infrastructure, and real world quests is real world reality, right? And this is the, the challenge is if it's the wrong ladder against the wrong wall, it doesn't matter how well you build it, right? And so if we're not going to face ecological collapse, if we're not going to face the, the challenge that is the separation, which is the underpinning challenge of spirituality, if we're not going to face climate chaos, right, then it doesn't matter what we build. We'll feel good as we all go down together, right? And if that's what we want to do, then that's the manifesto. We'll feel good as we all go down together, regardless of what the fuck's going on, right? Now, if we want to face reality and then say, and what is the culture we need if we're going to be open to facing that reality? And what is the infrastructure we need if we're going to uh, do something about it? And what are the real world quests that we now focus our energy and attention on because of that? Then I can see that, but the context setting always appears to be missing. And that's the only qualifier I'd put on. And I'd love Charles to say what he had his hand up for. Thanks. Um, okay. Let's see if I can uh, unload just a little tiny bit here. Um, just finishing a note. Okay, so trying to wind back from the meta future to, as Neil eloquently puts it, uh, what the fuck is going on now here, and where, and um, and how, and with what tools are we even agreeing to have this conversation right now to be literally on the same page? Infrastructure is a real request, okay? Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm, I'm quite passionate about that. And um, 
you know, we haven't sort of decided um, in terms of, of making sense and orienting and acting in the chaotic storms and flows, sort of where are we gonna start? Like even with the steering group, we can't even come to agreement yet. So I'm just observing that and I'm venting a bit because it's like all the meta stuff and, and you know, uh, presencing and, and we just, we need to in, interoperate actually tangibly in the real world. <laughs> Over. Oh, sorry, I had, um, what am I proposing? I'm not sure, but I had a quick cautionary tale. This was another thing that was lost a little earlier. Um, I'll try to make this brief. This is a longer call than I thought. Um, there's some friends of ours at, at a, a group called Radish, Radical Collective Intelligence. Some of you know, Jamin Shively, they're doing this new thing. Lauren and I opened up this whole five hour thing they call the press, press conference. Um, and that's, it's, we'll come back to that two minute lightning talks, but they decided now, which is bizarre to, um, and they have, they're gonna do this weekly, five hours sessions of two minute lightning talks, like hundreds and hundreds of these, they're gonna record them and deliver them on YouTube in two minute chunks. I don't know if they're really gonna do that. They have decided now to use what? For the follow-up communications threads uh, grouped according to different topics, email. Okay, and I'm just shocked. And it just speaks to exactly what Judy was articulating and I was resonating with in terms of, you know, there's so much chaotic, chaos uh, between the different channels and platforms. Um, we, we all do have our sweet spots and our combinations and that's really valuable. Um, they're never all gonna line up, but what's, the, what's, what's good enough? What's the minimum viable, at least for the steering now, just coming back to here and now, you know, for us to get something going, over. Go for it, Lauren. I think um, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out the three buckets here and um, they are intertwinkled and that's what it's hard for me to say, oh, which one would I um, uh, choose? Because I think maybe we need to have like a quest about the infrastructure that we're using and what is a quest? What exactly are the boundaries of a, a of a quest, and is that the same as a is that a project or um, like what does that mean to be on a quest, and um, what does culture mean? Um, so yeah, I'm enthusiastic about all of those. I just uh, I would love to know what what that means. I have a suggestion from some of our previous calls, where quest was allied with mission. So in other words, a quest has a beginning and an end, whereas a culture does not, and an infrastructure does not. And so, yes, I would agree that the quest to me is a project. And so it does have a, a beginning and an end. And that's why, I, while everything is intertwingled, that is the nature of systems thinking, um, the value of distinctions is saying these are separate. And so I do see those as different um, I think that the, I do agree with you, Lauren, about your idea that perhaps culture is a, is a separate piece from, and it's, it's co-developed. So as you're working on the quest, you're starting to focus the culture. I found that for personally myself, I tried to make my culture first, my personal brand first when I lost my job a year ago. It's very difficult. And every time I did it, I always started to do things and thought, oh, that doesn't fit. Now I have to redo the whole damn culture. How, you know, what, what am I about? And what I found was better was to just start doing things and revisit the culture and, redo, and do things and revisit my brand and do more things and revisit my brand. And that's how they came to come together. And so I, I see them as separate. I'm, I'm not struggling seeing those as things I can't make, make uh, separate, so. I, I, I like all four buckets. Um, uh, culture, I think comes first and infrastructure and 
um, action and reality. So, um, so we're actually pretty good. OGM is actually pretty good on culture. We've got a culture of listening and caring and, and taking turns and things like that. Um, it's not without imperfection. We, we need more diversity and more, you know, more action actually. Um, uh, an example, uh, so, so interested, the reality thing is really interesting for me. And thanks Neil for bringing it up. Re I have two and two reactions to it. Um, one of them is, um, like it, as Neil says, it doesn't matter, um, if we're building, you know, if we put the ladder uh, up uh, against the wrong wall, we're wasting time. Um, there are walls right in front of us, climate, um, food, uh, I would I would add in there bias and justice, um, and uh, you know there's there's a, maybe one or two more. Um, I am passionate about all those, and I am not the person to work on any of those. Um, my best work is when I can find somebody who needs to get shit done and help them get shit done. So I am a person who can come along and you know build ladders or build you know scaffolds or whatever. So, so it is that for OGM, the thing that I want to help OGM with is not getting a particular thing done, but helping it get things done by helping the people who are getting things done. Um, and so it is that I'm working on plumbing. I, I think of it as information and communication plumbing. You know, there, there ought to be a better place than a mailing list, it's a forum. Um, uh, the forum isn't perfect, it needs some help. Um, we need some Zoom chat stuff, we have a chat. Um, so then there's a weird thing with reality. Reality comes back for me when, um, as I build infrastructure, as we build infrastructure, as I can offer different infrastructural solutions to people, do you want a ladder? Do you want a scaffold? Do you want it to have like rungs far apart? Do you need them really narrow? You know, what are we going to do? It turns out that the technology of information and communication is hard. Um, and we all think it should be easy. And we all think it should revolve, you know, not, not unreasonably, but we all think it should revolve around me, right? I wish the technology were easy for me, you know? Um, so it is that discourse is not a perfect solution for what we needed for, you know, community collaboration infrastructure. And I can, you could get me going for an hour, literally, on the problems that discourse has in UI, UX, you know, use, in different kinds of usability things, um, you know, all that stuff. I, you know, I would love to just rant about that. It sucks. Um, it sucks less than all the other things that I can think of possibly tilting up for OGM, which is why we have discourse. Um, so, so we have this weird thing where people say, but I wish I could only just use email or, but I, you know, but this particular tool, I have this tool called, um, you know, uh, um, space shuttle. That's the better tool for me. I don't know why we aren't all using space shuttle. It's like, well, to get together, we, you know, we need to use common tools, it turns out. And I try really hard. Literally, I go to bed. I, you know, most of the past months have been me thinking about, how these tools are going to work together, how we're going to get stuff done, how to make them work best for the most people, the easiest. Um, so, um, so reality has this weird interaction with infrastructure, right? That if you're not um, not cognizant of the reality of the tools, um, you know, why don't we use uh, why don't we use Zulip instead of uh, Mattermost? You know, and it's like, well. It turns out that I looked into that for four hours or eight hours or something like that. And, you know, Zulip is fine, but in isolation and, and doesn't have all these other characteristics that we need for this whole set of tools to come together. And the other thing I, you know, the other part of this, I've also minimized the number of tools that I've wanted to present to folks. Um, so, you know, to, to make it least obnoxious to, to use tools. Computers suck, you know, sharing information and things suck. but. But I guess, you know, somebody said something, maybe it was Scott, um, but, you know, cart before the horse, but you need both to move. I don't know. Um, the, the other thing, there's an infrastructural thing that, that we need from, it's going to come from somewhere. This, so I guess I have already taken care of, I, in my head at least, I know that we're using 
uh, discourse. And I know that we're using Mattermost. And I know that they're not perfect and that people are going to complain about them. And actually, I appreciate that people complain about it. It's, it's you know, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Um, and I actually don't even have a problem if we decide to use something else. I'll help support something else if we need to. Um, or I'll say, you know, that's totally wrong direction. That's not my pot of soup. You know, maybe you guys should just try to do that. I don't know. Anyway, where I was going with this was um, I have a quest already um, to provide communication infrastructure to OGM. I didn't, you know, figure out the name that it was a quest or anything like that. I am already on it. It's going. I have people helping me, Bill and Rob and, and, um, and uh, Charles and a few other folks. There's, we ran into this really interesting question. Does OGM want to be an action network or does OGM want to be a discussion network? Um, I'm going to scroll back. Um, we started this call, we started talking about this uh, at, at almost the top of the hour. Um, uh, George, George put it, do we want to be mission oriented or field oriented, you know, um, subject area oriented. And the reason that does that, so I, so Matt, I appreciate that we would, we would potentially talk about the communications infrastructure. And I think that's actually important because I, I need help from the organization in getting adoption onto Mattermost because I think it's the right thing to do. Um, it would be best for everybody if that was fast. Um, the reality is it's going to be a slower than I want. Um, the reality might be that it, it's really slow. I don't have a problem with that. I do want to need help from, you know, the organization on making it faster and easier and better, but it's, it's going to happen or it's not. And I don't have a problem with it going slower, but there's a, a critical question. Are we an action network or are we a discussion network? And the reason it's critical is because I can, I can take or whoever the admin team and the moderation team can take discourse and warp it. We're going to start warping it into something. And, um, I, so, and, and I unconsciously, the proposal I was going to present here today was, and, and uh, I had Rob, you know, I, I, I kind of unintentionally browbeat Rob into agreeing with me <laughs> um, on, a, on a call with him without even realizing it. It's like, we want to be an action organization. Let's, let's promote action. And then that means that we shape the categories of, of discourse a different way than if we're a discussion group. So, I feel really I think, strongly that you can't decouple discussion and action because it's a loop. I agree. And I so, agree. To, to, so then it's, it then it's to a question of bias, and, right? It has to be an and, and they have to be compatible. So that the discussion and, feeds the action and the action enables and feeds the discussion. That's, that's how we grow and learn. Can I tag on there quickly? Um, the, I was having the same thought, but for this reason that the very action of, of uh, talking about and trying to um, put certain channels in, in, in a certain structure and you know being very concerned about the organization, the accessibility, the utility, that's the word I've been using today with Lauren, um, of the repository, this is action. Now that's very, very coupled with the, with the conversation. Without all of that, would OGM be OGM? No, I absolutely don't think it would. And so again, you know, maybe this these buckets are useful, but but how far? Over. I, I so Judy, you're totally right, um, and I'm not suggesting it's either or. I am suggesting that we have an opportunity. I have an opportunity, um, and I wish I could share it to bias the forum towards action or towards discussion or to completely balance them. I don't have, you know, I have, I have a lot of ego in other places. I don't have ego about this. I don't really care. I mean, I, I care a lot that somebody makes a good choice that we collectively make a good choice, but there's, there's stuff that we have to do. We have to do some cleanup stuff to get the forum, you know, percolating on from like, you know, working at 70% to 75 or 80%. Rob and I are ready to do it. Um, 
and as we do it, do I tune it towards, you know, do we tune it towards action or do we tune it towards um, discussion or do we completely balance it? And if it's towards action, I really <laughs> like the idea of quests. I like the, the language of quests. Um, and is quests what we want to call action? I don't care, but I do care that we kind of step consciously into that decision or I can defer the decision and, and you know, miss the opportunity to make a, uh, the forum work a little bit better as, as we want to right now. Matt, you've had your hand up. Yeah, I mean, you know, we can talk about language here and whether discussion is a form of action. But if you look at the way that human, you know, kind of, you know, we run all of these big collaborative sessions and the way that these sessions work is there's sort of this Di lots of lots of percolation, you know, popcorn, right? If you think about it, then popcorn starts to cluster around things, right? They start to connect dots and then uh, people begin to align, um, right? So the difference between discussion, which is an exchange of ideas and information to dialogue, which is moving toward a sense of agreement um, and, and alignment and then that alignment becomes the direction. And then that direction is what you take action around. And so I think, um, Pete, one of the things maybe to think about in terms of our communication system is how do we actually build a stack that allows us to move from this kind of randomness to starting to build clustering, to starting to build you know, real direction to, to putting action, right? And it, and it has a kind of a natural divergence, convergence to a point of focus. And one of the things is the more convergence you get to with after a lot of divergence, like if you take this amount of divergence and you squeeze it to a single point, you get a lot of la like a laser, right? Whereas if you get to this point, it's kind of a broad light and it get, kind of diffuses. And so we have to, I think our communication infrastructure needs to be able to hold that whole, that whole spectrum and be able to move things along. And I'm not talking about stage gate process or anything like that, right? I, I still think we, you know, I believe in, the, in, in systems of emergence, right? But I think if we started to say, look, this is the pace to percolate. It's on our Zoom calls where we're just open. And what we wanna do is to capture, like, capture that percolation in this vehicle for chat because that's just the that's just the percolation and this is the place to take a percolation and move it through a kind of a this a real dialogue right to a place of action and then this is the place to hold conversations of you know of action and it may be a couple of different places i think i think i think we have to build that whole thing right in order for for ogm to work um, and then there has to be places where people can come into and say, oh, I don't really need to be in the percolation piece. I really just want to be and tell me what you want me to work on and I'm going to work on that project. Or people who say, I just really want to live in the percolation space because I get a lot of juice from this and that's the type of action that I want to take. I think, I think we just need to build the, you know, build the entirety of that, of that infrastructure, right? And um, I, I think we have that. Great. So, but let's and, name it, frame it, let's communicate it, let's install it like, like a good, you know, when you, when you come onto a new football team, every season they install their plans. That means they communicate it, they practice it, they make sure everybody knows where to go, they train, and then they get into it. And I think we, as human beings, we, we, we like, like we're such an emerging group that we hope that people's adoption is emergent, but that's not the way that adoption happens. You know, P, you know, I need a certain level of training. I have some real barriers for certain things, just like other people. And if we're committed to saying, look, Pete, you put in a ton of energy and I want to honor that energy by saying, let's install it and then let's see what happens. But we can't just, we can't put it out there and hope that it works because without that install, just like a computer software being installed into a computer, Right. We need 
this human system to be installed into us and we need to take the time for install. So let's commit to taking the time for install of the, the, the few things that we're committing to. And it sounds like we're, we're kind of there, right? And then we say, if you need to supplement this with other means, then, then do, by all means do that. But this is where we're, this is the install that we're committing to, right? Uh, we definitely need that install. And yes, I agree. And I have a question, uh, uh, like it's a facilitation, a technology facilitation question. Um, I have an idea of how to focus, you said laser, focus the coherence of the laser um, by focusing, by, by emphasizing action categories over discussion categories. So yeah. then there's some problems with how to do that in the facilitation tech technology way. So that's, that's where I am right now. Um, you know, we've got the, we've got the communication infra infrastructure running, um, or a, a possible one. We should, um, we should install it. Um, we should help everybody use it. And in the middle of that, in, inside of that, the thing that's actually the, you know, the, the thing that I want to discuss is that the laser technique. And if, if that's the right thing, if, if OGM wants that, if the OGM steering group wants that, or if they want the laser pointed a different direction, or if they want a little bit broader collimation or narrower or what, so. And I'm sorry, my mute was off, and you guys probably could hear my daughter in the back in the background. But um, it's it's cool that way. I think we're struggling here, and we don't need to struggle this much. I think there's a strong sense of culture that we can capture that we've already identified because we've been around doing it for three years. It was a largely discussion cap category, but on the whole, people brought into their check-ins the action components that they were doing that were relevant to this particular group. So I think we should just start someplace and not make it too complex, be maybe redundant. Maybe this the OGM group list stays there and the people who want to use it will keep using it and the people who'd rather discuss will note that that's all happening, but they're going to go over to discourse or something else. And again, in terms of the that that can be a transition that evolves because if you then decide you want to work on a particular project or action area whether it's storytelling or environment or what um, it may be that your group decides oh we better migrate over to this one instead because it would be better for what we're trying to do and to me that's kind of a natural evolution and we shouldn't shouldn't too strong a word but i'm not sure it's a good use of this group's time to try to get to the perfect segregation process, we should just get started and let it kind of evolve organically. I'm sorry, I do think it's worth though creating documents. So this is this was something that I created to use email better, right? We called these things subject hashtags. Um, you know, I had an introduction to what they were, right? So you put a hashtag in front of it, you actually build your email box, you know, for these hashtags. And then I created, I created names of hashtags and I created what they were for, right? So this is where, you know, you hashtag sing signals is where you put anything that's information about our evolving business context. And then, and then, you know, how to introduce a new hashtag. I think the part of the question here, Pete, is what is the basic user guide? You know, what, what can we put down on paper that we can say here, here's how we intend to use these things and just and, and get some documentation to say, we think discourse should be used like this. We sh and we should put it in a form factor where it's sort of like a PDF or something people can print out and put on their desks, you know. Um, and I think that might help, you know, might help things. Okay. So you've got, you know, you've sort of got, you've got this, your beginning, you know, we is, got, yeah, yeah, this is actually not, not quite that. 
Um, so I agree. Uh, we need so, in a way, um, uh, discourse has self self documentation, right? You're supposed to in the interface. You're supposed to weave in how to use different categories. Yeah. Um, uh, this so this is the the category setup that we have right now. Um, ah. And here is where. Uh, I, I'm more or less browbeat Rob into I, maybe not maybe he came up with a lot of the idea and I, I'm and and maybe he deserves more credit for this too but anyway here's why I said you know there should be a top level thing called quests and discussions yeah so this <clears throat> this is <clears throat> this is a um, this is the laser collimation thing this is saying that Quests are a top level thing along with designing the system and bringing OGM to the world and big questions and stuff like that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, we already have this. This is the way the current forums is set up. Bringing OGM to the world has this tiny little thing called, I wish we were doing actions and stuff. So this is slated to go into, um, into quests and discussions and be here, right? And, and, then start to fill this thing in with environment and regenerative agriculture yeah. or soil health. And then there's a question around whether you, how much you focus these. Environment is probably too broad. Regenerative agriculture, I think, is probably still too broad. Um, soil health and food systems is maybe getting close enough to, you know, focused enough. So, um, so I need um, who is quorum for going through this, this set of categories and deciding what they're going to be and and on top of that we have this is us i think we're the quorum well not not all of this on this call i think unless you all want to be i i'm I, I don't care how big the group is i i think pete what we should do is we should we should get to a good a good proposal right and then I think we bring it to a Thursday call and we say, here's what it is. And then we, iter and we get all the feedback and then we do another iteration and we go until we feel like we get there. Right. That's the, you know, So the, the, the good proposal is the part that I'm a little bit stuck on. I have what I think is a good proposal. I don't know that the steering group thinks that, that it would be a good proposal. And in particular, so, so looking at, Looking at this structure, I, we've got a, a bunch of positives and minuses to the structure as it is. And so one of the one of the rules of facilitation and categorization and library and science and stuff like that is you can't make big changes, right? So for better or for worse, we have the category system that we have. Um, it's it's not perfect in a lot of ways, and it's okay in a lot of ways. And we need to make changes, and we need to make the changes so that they're, you know acceptable to people and useful and helpful and not freak them out too much um the or we're early enough where we can we can just make the big changes and yeah we're and we're not i think um i think so i it's it's pretty far along um so then the the next question is uh oh, just, and just before you go there pete can i just check yep. in on something we're talking here about governance and lack of governance right we're talking here about your inability to find somebody that can say, yes, this is a good proposal, go with it. We've talked about how we might bring that back to the whole Thursday group and whether that's a good idea or not. Uh, we've talked about what is the steering group and I still don't know who the steering group is. So we're actually getting to the point of saying, who is qualified, who is capable, who is mature enough to make decisions on the technical versus the social, on the, uh, the, the polycentric governance process versus the how do we have some sort of hierarchical mechanism that agrees this is who we tr trust. We're talking here about where is the expertise and some of the deep interview stuff that Lauren and others were talking about last night might go there. But who are we going to trust inside a set of rules that we have agreed that we will trust people to bring us the best proposals and to trust them that they are doing the best they can within an overarching set of governance principles of doing the best for all in the limited time available. That's governance. Now, I think we're afraid of actually saying what is the mechanism for how we get to that point. And we need to make some decisions here on who is going to help to get us to the next stage to put a stepping stone in front of all of us that we have all agreed on either directly through consensus 
or through some handing over of that authority to somebody else to make that decision on our behalf because they are the most context able leader in that field. Over. And I'd like to add one thought to what Neil's saying. I, I like what you have and I think we need to move, but I also think that people absorb information at different levels of penetration. And so I think if we were at this point to go to the whole of OGM and the great size of the group list, I'd wanna say the, the working team is evolving mission, culture, the four things we described. And here are four bullet points under each of them. Let us know if you have additional ideas while we keep working to get to a document that we can send, but whatever document we send needs to be pretty simple because otherwise people won't actually read it. There'll be a few that will will ask for more. You know, if we send them the major headings and the ABCs and said there are sub ones, sub twos, et cetera, some people would request the full document and others would say, I'm okay with this the way it looks. So- I, I'll, Yes, I, I'll, I'll go further than that, Judy. Nobody's gonna read it at all, ever. Um, so the, the way this sort of thing works is you, you set up the structure and you let people know the structure. I'm, and I, nobody is a, is a exaggeration. One or two people will read it. The, the thing that you want is to have the structure set up and then facilitate people into it, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you know, uh, hey, Joe, it looks like you're talking about a quest. You know, we have this whole new category called quests. And I think that's probably where you want to put this discussion. So it ends up being a decision and a structure, but the facilitators and the leaders, you, you write rules so that you have something to refer to when people break them, right? Or, or maybe that's a little bit too harsh for this group, but. Um, <laughs> I get what you're saying. There's behaviors that are not acceptable. That's the mediation process. Not even not acceptable, just, you know, just doesn't fit into the structure. So people, people aren't going to read a long email about structure and it's it just, it's noise to them, right? It's not part of getting their, their job done. Uh, they're going to come to, they're going to come to the structure and try to use it. And they're, you know, to the, to the extent that we've made a beautiful structure and it's easy to use, they'll find their way to the extent that we had to make the structure less beautiful for structural reasons or whatever, then we need the facilitation team separate from the moderation team to George's point. We need the facilitation team to help people find the right places to have discussions, right? I have a, there's there's a, a little technical, there's maybe a big, there's a big technical issue with my laser focus on action here that um, whoever is, so I guess there's there's two parts kind of to, to Neil's, um, what Neil discussed. There, I need two things. I need the team of folks, and I think it's probably pretty small, who will think through the uh, information architecture and and technical facilitation of you know this category and that category, and the conundrum here is that if we emphasize action and then make the subject areas a sub sub to action, then we need to duplicate the subject areas for the place where we want to have philosophical discussions about. Um, you know, so you have action discussions and philosophical discussions. And if you put the subject areas as a sub, then you've incurred the structural um, ugliness of having to duplicate that, that subject area in two places. Normally what we would do is put the subject area on the top and then you know everything flows from there. Everybody understands that. That's the way we've been doing library science for hundreds of years, et cetera, et cetera. I think, I think the thing to do for OGM's action orientation is to subvert that and make action the, the primary thing and subject area the secondary thing. And then that incurs significant structural challenges to you know the the information architecture and the facilitation architecture and things like that. So so there's that conundrum to solve. And then there's separately, there's the, who's the group of the, you know, who is the, the steering group? Who are the people who kind of bless things? There's Jerry and there's Matt, and maybe there's some other folks. Um, I have some, I have some pull just because of all the stuff that I'm doing. Um, you know, who are the people that go, okay, 
you know, Pete and a small team of folks came up with this, this structure and it, it satisfies, it's not perfect, but it's what we're going to go with. Um, and maybe as part of that satisfaction, we, we emphasize action like I'm kind of proposing. Um, Pete and it, the smaller team came up with this, this um, proposal. Here's the proposal. We think it's great. Let's do this. You know, Jerry has to say that. Matt has to say that. Maybe there are a few other people who have to say that. I don't know who those people are. I have a question in terms of action, because maybe I looked at this wrong, but I saw OGM as a, as a big field that would enable innumerable action teams not just the people who are in the regular OGM calls or that particular subset of people. And so the simplicity of enabling or supporting action initiatives, uh, Quest feels really big and consolidated, like fix the environment. That's indeed a Quest, but it will pass my lifetime probably. Um, but there's probably literally thousands of teams that could be doing individual quests locally or something. And I know the group is thinking at that level of complexity, but in the sense we need to make things as simple as possible for the user. Yeah, I, to I think to enable. so. Um, so the the um, the avatar for this for me is Klaus, right? When Klaus talks about soil health, it's like. I don't even know why I'm on this call. Let's go find Klaus. Let's fix the soil, right? Um, so, um, and and soil health, and probably what we would want to do is help get Klaus to come down to something more concrete. What can we do in the next six months that's going to move the needle, right? Um, and so that is the kind of that's the size of quest that I want to see. You know, a three month or six month or nine month kind of like. Focus I, I kind of like the term to... project better than quest. Quest feels like it might take my lifetime and I'd still not have done it. Um, and, and maybe there's different levels of, of yeah. projects and quests. I don't know. Um, uh, we and and I think you're right. There's going to be thousands of those and they don't all fit within OGM, right? So another thing that I've done already is I've said, I have a quest to improve communication infrastructure and information infrastructure for collective people who are, are sense making, right? And I have it, and it, now it's outside of OGM. There's CSC, it's a separate thing, you know? OGM, it's a member of OGM, it's part of OGM, but already I have come to the decision that if we're gonna have thousands or tens of thousands of action groups, they are going to significantly bud off and turn into their own little thing. So when I think of joining Klaus, um, you know, with planting um, planting plants to regenerate soil or something like that, you know, partly it's it could be an OGM and partly it has to be something else, right? There are going to be people in that quest, in that project, who probably never even heard of OGM, or they hear some of the people talking about OGM and it's like, okay, whatever. I've, you know, we've got a thousand plants to plant today. Let's do that. And I don't know why we're talking about OGM, right? So I, I agree that OGM, I, I think, so I think we can, OGM should be a nursery. One of the things OGM should be is a nursery for ideas to spin up, for people to coalesce around an action. And a lot of those things bud off and turn into things that are part OGM and part their own thing, like CSC. CSC has already done that. Uh, can I comment on your um, divisions on the um, watermost? Can you put it up on the screen again? Sure. <laughs> uh, you know, by commenting, you're joining the, uh, the team that needs to make a really beautiful proposal, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I, so I thought everything made sense, but um, sort of like in the way that we all uh, chat while we're Zooming on Mattermost, it makes sense. It makes total sense. Um, but it's, for example, like the OGM marketplace. Um, I don't know if there is a marketplace yet. My my general sense is that you tried to start it and no one was really there, right? Or did I, yep. did well, I miss Yeah. That? 
So, um, uh, so OGM Marketplace is currently in the wrong place in the hierarchy. Um, it's too far up. I did that on purpose. Um, so here's Pete just doing stuff, right? Starting a, a, a stone pot soup and going, okay, <laughs> this is going to happen sooner or later. I'm just going to start doing it, right? So yes, I just started OGM Marketplace. I have, you know, two posts and, you know, two other people who've liked it. So what I don't have is what Matt was calling installation. You know, Matt or Jerry have not blessed the idea of a, an OGM Marketplace. They haven't said, you know, I've posted in OGM Marketplace, have you? Um, in a larger sense, uh, Lauren, you and I share a goal of um, uh, OGM Marketplace for me is an, an, an offers requests system. Um, uh, it is a matchmaking system. It is kind of the most simple and most stupid one that you could invent, right? Um, and so, so it is because I have a little poll with the guy who runs OGM Forum. Um, I could actually instantiate it in an OGM forum and see if it stuck, right? Um, it may or may not stick. It's certainly not sticking yet. It, it, I could, you know, with a few people, I could start to push it into something better. In reality, OGM marketplace, I think OGM, a, a group like OGM needs its own private marketplace, but really, if you think about it, what we want, what you and me and Charles and, you know, uh, Vincent um, want, I'm going to let her talk to her kid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no worries. I'm just thinking that we, we're making this way more complex than we need to make it because this is an ever expanding community that's going to reach outside the community itself. So I, I understand what we're looking at. And I think a group of us can work on the list for Pete to enable for those people who want that level of depth, how we're going to do it and make things that smaller groups use compatible with feeding into that process somehow. But I think if we try to envision all of the layers of guidance that we need for a massive global effort, we'll just get stuck in the mud. This is what I call different meta levels on the, the mailing list. Yeah. Um, where, you know, somebody's meta level is super fascinating to them and completely boring to everybody else. Um, I happen to be on, on a, I'm, I'm going down a rat hole a little bit with Lauren because, well, because I guess it's interesting to me and Lauren. I, I guess I forgot that the rest of you were here. Um, but let me continue <laughs> because it's so important. <laughs> Um, at the meta level of OGM Marketplace, OGM Marketplace is kind of a hack. Um, what we should really have is CSC or CSC and Kiko Lab or CSC and OGM or OGM or God knows who, um, or yet something that should be invented. Um, I desperately want to be running a offers and requests system. I want to have a project directory, a, a person directory, a um, organization directory. Uh, you have um, hash bins and the hashverse. Vincent has Catalyst. Um, there are two or other two or three other people who have discussed the same. Let's have a directory thing um, in OGM forum. So, coming coming back back to OGM marketplace. OGM marketplace is simple. It's it's um, easy to understand. It could potentially be kind of a spark onto the path of having a a nice request offers system that's federated out to the you know the whole rest of the world. That's where we're going. That's where OGM Marketplace is going. Um, it may or may not be the right the right embryo to start with. Um, I would. My, my my question, just in terms of the design, is like the way that you set it up can um encourage certain behaviors like how you do the um hierarchy and kind of infrastructure can determine whether storytelling are people in storytelling going to be telling some meta narrative of the world or are people in storytelling going to be helping people in ogm tell better stories so that they can improve what they're doing those that's that's what i'm saying in terms of like this the 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 structure what do we want to have happen and 
how can we uh, yeah. facilitate that? Can, can I just offer just a quick thing for, for both of you in, in general, like it's the starting point that we're trying to get to. It's like the minimum viable, whatever yeah. version one or version 0 0.1 or, you know, whether it's alpha, beta, you know, I, however we want to call it, it's just getting to that point to be able to iterate and to start to operate. Just, just the observation that what we're talking about here is building the function before we've actually discussed the functional requirements spec and talking about the functional requirements spec before we actually know what we're here for and why. That's the big picture framing. It's not to say we don't have some overlaps of common understanding, but the exemplar you used of, of uh, uh, Klaus, for example, is a, a classic example of how for Klaus, he wants a detailed system that can give him the people involved in the ecosystem around soil health and be able to tap into the data that's needed. And that might be the model that we need for every other big uh, chunk like regenerative agriculture. At the same time, I think you're doing a great job, Pete, of keeping the options open for if this becomes a global network is poly centric governance there still needs to be a set of overarching rules whether it be the information architecture some sort of manifesto of the things that we will do and the things that we won't do ogm as an umbrella does not do stuff does do stuff which is damaging to the environment damaging to uh to people right simple as that the things we will get involved in are these this is how we make our decisions this is how we do our governance this is how we identify our priorities within that these are the tools we use now the tool infrastructure and where i came from before with no regrets provided the tool infrastructure is scalable both up and out which is i'm sure where you're coming from very much pete because you you've got that, that capability and provided it allows the functions in terms of the detail lauren was just talking about is it telling story or is it uh, building meta story? And if it's got both of those, great. Functional requirements spec tick, right? We need to maintain no regrets, capabilities and maturity in the system for it to be uh, evolved into as OGM gets its act together. But the overarching thing is, do we all agree? And, and my sense is we do, we just haven't actually put it down on paper. Do we recognize we're in climate and ecological collapse? Yes. Do we recognize we're going to do the best we can for humanity? Yes. Do we recognize we've got localized projects? Yes. Do we recognize as big topics? Yes. Do we recognize we've all got complex skills and different abilities? Yes. How are we going to identify who works on what, where and when? And if your tool can do all of that, then you've got your functional requirements spec and I'll sign off on it. it just a, a glimpse of something that made me smile is that it's, you sound like a kinesiologist a little bit and you can do muscle testing for each of these questions. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> it's, it's, it's what I do with, with my systems sensing and systems thinking is I feel the pain points. And because I have those pain points, I know what they feel like and I know what helps. And I also know what didn't work last time. And so I've got life experience of multiple ways of trying to get people to work together and have failed. And it's not that I don't try. It's that it gets to a certain point where the level at which they're operating is not sufficient for what I believe is needed, which is facing the big reality. So it's not, I don't want to play. It's why would I play here if I can play there? And that's the same challenge with the software and the technology and everything else. So who's our tribe? In Klaus's case, he coming here for governance assistance to get to what he thinks is the, the most important priority. I'm not saying that's not the most important priority for him. I'm saying it's not the most important priority for me because I could develop a systems design laboratory model which could go into every place in the world that was ready for it which would include regenerative agriculture right so to me the nested model is how we get people to collaborate not how we do soil regen the soil regen is a technical element of collaborative people working within scientific principles how do we get them there maybe it's story so there's logical sequences here and the kinesthesiology is probably a good example, sensing into feeling what the system needs to enable it to dance again, not just sit on the couch and go, God, my back hurts. <laughs> Thanks. So just to flag what I put just in the chat, like I was really resonating, Lauren, with what you said about story and narrative based on the structure of the, of the forum. And 
So I'm reaching for, I have a sense that there's a way somehow for us to, to optimize or to adjust in the design with that in mind. I mean, my basic sense from this group, I could be wrong, but I have never worried like, oh my God, is OGM just going to go like a runaway train and just start doing shit without like talking about it and discussing it? I have never feared that. <laughs> so I, I mean, for the design, I mean, I'm not even sure if you really have to like emphasize that talking. I think this group that is their natural inclination to have these deep discussions with a, no encouragement whatsoever. So that's why I do support you, Pete, in the um, kind of presenting action as the, you know, top level, uh, what people go kind of is presented first in yeah. terms of like, um, what are we going to talk about? Here's that action items, so, you know. Um, can, like I can I just gently challenge what you just said, Lauren? Yeah, sure. Uh, I don't think anybody's concerned that this group's gonna go off, right? The question is, if it went off in a direction that you couldn't sign up to, would mm -hmm. you still be part of this group, right? So if it started doing stuff which was anti-Semitic or you know, uh, genocidal, right? So there are things that you would not agree with if it was mm -hmm. doing it. So let's not pretend that if it was going a particular direction, we wouldn't, we would be there. The only things we can bring at the moment as volunteers mm -hmm. is the choice to be engaged or not. And if we mm -hmm. choose to be here, what are we choosing to be here for? And what are we choosing here to not be here for? So that's the simple, you know, am I in, am I out? Is it my tribe? And, and I'm just saying that to me, that's a, a critical framing element that is the underpinning of the, whatever governance is. And then we give people free reign within that with whatever we choose as the tools. I always tell the story of um, me making this list um, before I met my husband, because I it's always super relevant for me. And um, so I met this couple, or this beautiful couple, and they each had their different ways of making their lists. And the woman said, oh, I just wrote out like 50 things that I wanted in a husband. And she had her list of like 50 things written out. And the husband said, I had a list of nine things and I put them in order of, you know, essentials, needs, and wants. And to me, intuitively, this list, um, which is not like a manifesto, but it was just like, I am going to limit what I'm asking for. So the universe knows exactly what I want and in what order. And I got exactly what I asked for. And it helped me clarify when there was this other guy, he seemed really great, super talented, but I noticed that he did not have the number one thing on my list, which was integrity. So I was like, now that I have my list and I have it ordered, I'm like, I couldn't possibly go out with someone who does not have the number one thing on my list. So I think that's what we kind of need here. It's like, yes, you know, OGM is for this and that and all the good things possible, but what is actually the most important things and in what order? Mm -hmm. Now, I think that would help a lot to, you know, decide the, the structure of, and that would also help what we need, I think, are tools to help differentiate between different groups and express that culture. Um, and and that, that's difficult until you like go through an experience. Um, you know, usually what happens is the group can't, you know, they make a submission statement that doesn't really mean anything. Um, <laughs> but you know your, your grief and your pain from your previous experiences of bad manifestos is showing lauren <laughs> um I, I wrote the question in the discourse channel which i haven't revisited and probably need to shortly uh -huh. uh, why are we here the big question and the answers i got showed a vertical differentiation of people that recognized big picture right uh -huh. through to nitty-gritty stuff right through to kevin even saying we don't do that sort of shit. we're incapable of doing that was the comment right so 
So at this point, we have an undifferentiated group of people with multiple different levels of skills, multiple different mm -hmm. worldviews on how it needs to operate and multiple priorities on what's most important. Mm -hmm. Now, the beauty of these dialogues is it allows that to be seen. For those of us that can pick up those different levels, we feel that. What we don't have is an overarching set of uh, principles which say, despite the fact that we want to get off here, here, here or here, do we all agree that we're all here for broadly this? Mm -hmm. And if we're all here for broadly that, then how can I enable you, as Pete does so beautifully, to do your bit, your bit, your bit, your bit, your bit, your bit, or your bit? And if you've got a really bit, a bit that's really important, how do you not hog all the resources, Klaus or other, right, to make everybody go your way? Let's create the strange attractor that allows those that want to do your project with you within these rules come to you and give them all the tools they need, support them. And to me, a systems design laboratory at a local or bioregional level that's actually repairing environment, society and soil would be a, a critical mechanism that OGM could inform, both as exemplar model and tools to support and the skills to go in and do blitz makeovers, whatever you want to call it. So to me, we have the skills to combine we need to recognise there's a vertical differentiation of where people want to get off in terms of complexity, philosophy, um, simplicity, just do it, follow the rules within the technology, etc. And if we honour the potentials and the potential complexity of each individual, including me, in this, then that's another one of the rules. We honour the complexity of the individuals with which we're dealing. We will honour their development as they go through these different stages. And we will recognise that if they're grieving from past manifesto experiences, that we can help them with a process which softens the blow for them while we show them why it's a benefit, which is what Pete's doing for us with technology. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> I still think we have to what I'd like to see us do is have a clear and simple statement of values and right on with what Lauren is saying. It's not an encyclopedia of values. You know, it's, we're committed to being an open inclusive community. There may be caveats if your integrity is lacking or your other dimensions. So we need the other adjectives that go with that to, to help define the constructive quality of this community. That's probably what attracted each of us to it from the be very beginning. And I think what you're doing, Pete, is critical because I would trust you to just say, okay, Judy, you really only need to learn these three programs <laughs> because you've got the, the knowledge to do it and you will sort the differences out at a level I couldn't possibly begin to be informed to us to do. <laughs> I can be your test bucket though. Can somebody who's only moderately complicated <laughs> able to do this? You know, I'm, I'm learning to use the ones you've given me so far, so they're not too bad. <laughs> um, so I think you, you that your point. approach would be really helpful. At, I think to go back to the whole group with output from the workshop, which is part of what I think Matt and Jerry and others really want to do, it needs to stay at a high level of output not all of the detail of drilling down for the first pitch, because I think we want consensus on the big picture in terms of vision and values, and, and then operationalizing how you enable the achievement of those things is a different process and will invite different people. I, I wonder if we can start a topic on, on the forum um, just for values, OGM values. Perfect. The, the other way to do it would be for a smaller group to, to draft a, you know, draft a, a doc. One thing, you know, what, um, what we did in Kiko Lab last night and that I think is really effective as a process, we do the circle appreciations, the group of appreciations and people say, they just ask, well, you know, why are you coming to this group? And people say, and then what I do is cut a video together of um, basically just cutting to shorten the responses. And um, then I make a word cloud. I cut it in such a way that you can see the kind of repetitions in that. And that is just a kind of a natural way of um, finding out why people go there. Um, without too much rigmarole, it just kind of emerges the, um, the value system. 
I was just, you just kind of read my mind. I just put in the chat, there was something called, maybe it's probably still going, it's called World Values Day. It might just simply be that as a URL. Um, and they do a lot of word cloud stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty quick and, and meaningful. I mean, I to, me, to limit the me, number of words. Like back to, back to my list, if you just have a bunch of different values, that's uh, not as meaningful as having like, this is our, you know, number one in, in ordering of kind of like these values to make it clearer uh, in terms of governance and design and all of this. Um, I, I need to go shortly. I agree, I agree with you, Lauren, and I agree with you, Judy. Um, I've had some experience with this and I, I'll give you a little example. Um, I was invited to be a wild card for a 2013 Matt and Gail Taylor design shop held in Sydney around um, trying to find cures for brain cancer. And it had, uh, it was a, a three day residential um, and it had uh, representatives of people that had survived brain cancer, people that had lost family members, brain surgeons, pharmaceutical companies, you name it, our researchers, uh, hospice carers, so a, an ecosystem. And we've got part of that ecosystem here in, in OGM as an example, but we don't have quite the diversity yet. Um, out of that, we started to recognize that there was an opportunity to write uh, sort of a manifesto type thing and it had two parts. We, the undersigned, believe these bang, 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 10 points. You know, mm -hmm. brain cancer is an indiscriminate, uh, you know, existential risk to anybody that can, you know, potentially get it. Two, you know, we recognize the dignity of, you know, human life to make decisions, etc. So it had these points about what we believe. And therefore, page two, therefore, this is how we will act. And so again, the facing the reality of the situation, and this is how we will react. Those two parts act as a mirror to say, in this context, this is why we do this. And something as simple as that could be something that people, I could put on the table as a draft, people could play with it, or we could sit down and do a workshop and use Miro or whatever to move things around. But if you start with an open-ended uh, set of values, then um, it can be tricky because you uh, people are coming at different levels of what they think a value is. But if you give them a couple of hints as to what we're here for, then it can start to cement. And I think we've got enough feel for this group to put something general together and say, is this the sort of thing you could, you could go, yes, I'm excited to be part of this. And if not, where would you change this? And what are the rules for how we change these rules, which is the meta constitutional process? What are the rules by which we will agree the rules? What are the rules by which we'll change the rules? And but the first thing is you drop the nucleus in and see, can people get around this? And if not, where are the, where are the differences? And Pete's doing that with his technological uh, proposals here. Here's, here's an idea of how I think it could work. Here's a structure and people are going, yeah, yeah, pull, pull, pull. Right, so I'm happy to be part of a values discussion around some of this, throw a couple of models on the table and see what we come up with, and then say, how does the group now govern around creating the rules by which we will agree to be governed? That's meta-constitutional development. Where, where should we do that values discussion? Well, I haven't been to discourse for a while, so I'm feeling very guilty. Um, so the I think it's it's a question of how do we get people to read something enough to delve into it deeply enough to know whether they can commit or question it enough to actually ultimately be bound by it or not. And this is a commitment question because you're basically saying, if you don't say uh, change this, then you'll be bound by this. And these are the rules we would use to govern you because we've all agreed these rules. So this is the challenge of, the, the double-edged sword of, of a governance process. If we can't agree to be co-governed, we're not a tribe or a group. Seems like a ranked voting would be the process. If we could develop, if we could first gather adjectives or qualities of values and then indicate, provide it to the entire ensemble for a ranked ordering for some number, you get five votes, pick your top five and see what the spread and outcome is, that would be a process that could possibly work. I, I would scope it smaller. Um, I, I think it's a team that could come up with, and I think I would make them into sentences ultimately. I think starting off with, um, you know, word clouds and dot votes would be fine. But um, 
Oh, I, I agree, Pete. That's but, but you have close to get to, the statements of direction. Yeah. Close to this group would be a good group to work on values. You know, here's here's a, a draft value statement um, that goes up through Matt and Jerry and whoever else. And then they, you know, they say, OK, this is kind of what we think the values. And, th and then I guess they would probably lead a, a little bit of um, full organization facilitation around that. Are there things that we want to change about this draft? And, you know, what are I would just I would just want to say I'm not against the manifesto. I'm just saying, like, you know, if you go to almost any nonprofit, they have some mission statement. And for some reason, it just seems useless. Like, like, like bullshit. It's not, it's not giving me any information. Real information. Exactly. It's useless unless it's embodied. Right? And this has to be in the heart, not just read it in the head. Right. And that means we have to own it, which means we have to go through a painful process of agreeing it. And that's the challenge. If I don't agree, I shouldn't be here. If I do agree, I'm here. Now, what is it I will agree with? And this is the scary part for OGM. And I think we're dancing around this and we're not facing it. It comes up again and again, right? The scary part is, if I say something that the others don't like, will I be kicked out? Because I like this secular fellowship. If I say something that's too outrageous, will I be kicked out? Where is the locus of power? Is it Jerry? Is it somebody else? You know, who's got the brain? Who's got the whatever, right? Is this going somewhere else? Is there a vested interest in where the technology is going to take this? And if I give IP, where's that going to go? So there's a bunch of questions here with every group I go into. If I share openly and vulnerably here, am I in a safe place? If I don't share openly and vulnerably here, am I actually showing up? And if I can't show up fully, what the fuck am I doing here? Right, so how do we create a mechanism where those that show up know they can show up fully? And that's the challenge is that we have to get to that point of confidence in each other to support each other through this grown zone. And when we come out the other side, we will have the simplicity, the other side of that complexity. Once we have that nucleus, then we can say, we all agree to this. Anybody who wants to join us, you need to agree to this. Or here's the rules for how you change the rules if you've got a better rule. So if you come in with a better piece of code, as Pete would say, if you've got a better piece of code, what was it you said, a pull or pull measure? Go back up the line and say, I think I've got a better way to do this. And everybody goes, oh, yeah, let's have a process around agreeing. Is that the right piece of code to plug in? And it becomes the new DNA code for OGM. So it's, it's painful because we haven't actually got to that point of really seeing each other across these big differences. And that's why we have differences about project versus quest versus we haven't got the ontology. We haven't got the language. We haven't got the priorities. We haven't got the structure, but it's slowly coming. It's a grown zone. It's going to hurt. We can do it. Yeah, I think we can um, bring our experiences with collaboration to the table and make up little scenarios. Like, What happens if someone does this? What does OGM do with this kind of behavior? And that specific kind of thing of working through scenarios, I think would be more helpful than, you know, the we're into thrivability. Okay, and, but what do we do if someone it makes an anti-Semitic remark or something? <laughs> and and Lauren, in the question mode, like what you just said, I I really like because it's it's asking questions. So so coming up with designing the right questions, to, you know, tuning the also the sequence of the questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, with the, with these scenarios, um, it was something I, I I was I was trying to remember Lauren because we've talked quite a bit, but not that much recently about values. Um, and I know, speaking from my own experience in, in, in trying to kind of mount global scale initiatives and communities and, and stuff, basically I ran aground in, the main, in, in one loose project that lasted three years. It got basically bogged down in the values definition. It never happened. It just never happened at all. I'm not saying that that would necessarily, that could be a pattern or a caution. Um, but Lauren, I know you had some specific thoughts on values. I don't know if you have to go, sorry, but I was gonna ask you to recall what we had talked about. I if that know. was enough of a prompt, not necessarily. I think you, basically it's it's the contrast between, you know, discussing all this stuff and just jumping in and doing it. Now, maybe that's another distinction with Kiko Lab where we're agile in certain ways 
this is another kind of um, beast. Yeah. I mean, I definitely sense that um, OGM is so pleasant and nice that there is definitely a reluctance to be like, no, we are not that, that, that this is where we draw the line. And beyond that, that's not us. And there's definitely like a, there's definitely like kind of like a, a power structure. And I think we need to get that down on paper. I think it's fine. Does Jerry make decisions? That's fine. Let's just write, you know, write it down so that we know that that's the case. And I think that that's a really hard discuss uh, discussion for OGM, who has the power and how do we make decisions? Well, it shouldn't be because in a sense, we all have personal power and we can deploy it wherever we want. And so if, if the main power is doing something different than what we wanna do, we start our own power group, you know, to do whatever it is that is more important than the heading at the top. I and mean, that's the nature of society and culture. That's how people, affinity it helps. and create action that they can support. It, it helps if there's a focal point for somebody, for one or two, or I don't know, maybe a whole group of people. Um, oh, one I'm not best saying we couldn't have it, but I think we're gonna, we should acknowledge that there will be imperfections of fit. And that doesn't make the whole invalid. It just means that there's a, a satellite here or there that's, you know, as long as it's consistent with our core values, that's okay. If it's not consistent, then we don't want it under our umbrella because we wouldn't support the non-fit. There's there's a, a fair amount of of tr essentially trivial difference that that you need a leader to to you know gloss over. So so an example, for instance, um, that might that might resonate with people. They might have some experience with this. Is um, uh, hey, uh, I personally think that we should all use Mattermost uh, instead of Zoom Chat. <laughs> um, so if I go say that on the OGM list, you know, it's like, okay, well, we'll get 10 people and, and you know, and a bunch of people saying it's too hard. I don't, I don't like it. I, why aren't we using this or blah, blah, blah. So if you just went and did that, <clears throat> there'll be at least a few people following because they're going to miss well, you a and indeed, we, we already have them, you know, we, we have them today. It took, you know, 20 minutes to get everybody in, in Mattermost that are going to get in it, right? So, but, but if Jerry said that, if Jerry said, I'm you know, kind of like he did with the email recently, I'm ringing the gong, thanks for all being in the, you know, in the foyer, but now we need to go actually do work and chat effectively. And that tool, you know, is Mattermost. That's a different, you know, and and we need that. Otherwise, we kind of mill around, and you know, Pete's waving one flag, and somebody else is waving another flag. And yeah, I mean, I think it's so. Perfect. Lauren, to your point, I, we need a we need a, somebody to to say, or yeah, we need to acknowledge the focal point, a focal point. I mean, you know, um, I've had a conversations. Um, about like stewardship and it, you know governance is all kind of like whatever until you're actually stewarding something worth value and then it becomes real and then these questions become more intractable so it's like it's all kind of like theoretical and whatever until there's you know money on the table or something and then the if like if we got a contract and who you know and there was actually money on the table who gets that money? How do they decide who to hire and you know what to do and who makes those decisions? Then it becomes really real. Exactly, and that's why I've posted the the, uh, the principles of the commons a couple of times and I can weave in some better words around that when I start to do the value discussion stuff. But a commons, a common pool, right? As, as you were doing with Kick Our Lab last night, that's a common pool harvested from uh, collective inputs. The question is who's going to do what with it? And that's why I was asking those questions. Um, you know, if this is going to become the rules by which we're all going to be governed, then hang on, you're missing a few. All right? If this is already somebody else's beautiful uh, work of art, what am I doing chipping away with a hammer, right? Um, so, you know, you've got to respect what's there before, but you've got to know what is it we're trying to create and how we're going to get there. Um, the contributory and distributory element, as you just said, 
if, if there's a common pool of resource that somebody has been developing, in this case, Jerry, for 20 years with bringing in all these links, but now a whole bunch of people coming around it, you know, who's expecting what, right? So what's in it for me is one driving you know, value set for you know, certain types of people. The other is, what could we do with this on behalf of humanity, which is a bigger picture outcome? So where are we putting that? And if somebody's putting stuff in thinking it's going to be used for the benefit of humanity and somebody else is extracting the value from that to sell as IP or as a platform for, for use by others, then have I just unwillingly contributed to somebody else's wealth at the expense of humanity? Because that's where my integrity starts to go, hang on a minute, what am I being integral to? The team or the cosmos, right? And so there's different levels of integrity depending on how you get there. The vertical coherence element here is how does every action that I do within this set of rules, within this group, within this cosmos, contribute to thrivability or benefit? So it's not just an overarching concept that's thrown up on the wall and nobody knows what it means. How does my individual action, how does my individual stance, how does my relationship with others, how does their relationship with others beyond here correlate in a way that makes a bigger difference than I could alone? Because if there's a value in that and people can see it and I can be rewarded or supported, you know, some sort of basic income to keep doing that, I'll keep doing that. But if you can't see my value, and this is part of what you heard last night, not so much a whine, if people can't see my value, what the fuck am I doing? If people can't see it's important, why am I doing it? If they can't see what I think is a bigger objective, why am I focusing on theirs? Right? And so how do we get to that vertical recognition of differentiation and the horizontal coordination required to enable whoever wants to get off at what level to do that. And that's the process that I'm playing with in several groups at the moment. Um, the lessons I'm learning internally as well as externally is stick to the guns, state the reality as you see it. And if it resonates, people will go, yes, this is what we need to do. You've got to hit them in the heart and then the head stuff follows. But if you come in with the structure and force them all to fit it when their hearts aren't in it, you're not going to have anybody there when you open the door. i got to go, guys. I'm sorry I have to dash like that. And yeah, forgive my impassioned rants, uh, but I think I, I felt good. I think we're getting somewhere here and I'm happy to go and play and discourse with something around values. But Pete, if you wanted to perhaps pose the, the starting question. I, th I think the thing to do is to do it all together. I think to do it on a call and on discourse at the same time is the right way to start. Beautiful, because otherwise it looks like Neil kicking it off. And this is the thing, it has to have some sort of head of power that says the group thinks this is a useful thing to do and yeah. we empower somebody to start the process. Because then it's at least a, a generative governance step where people go, oh, okay, it's not just Neil asking stupid questions again, because the assumptions um, that go with that. <laughs> I'll, I'll send an a email to the folks on this call. Let's, let's talk to have a value. It feels like the right, a good group of people. Yeah. Well, of course it is, Judy. Yeah, I've got to go though. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's still good when I've gone. Keep your integrity, all of you lot. Love you all. Take care. Bye. <laughs> I really need to go too. I suspect we all need to go because it's, it's a good time to wrap. An I hour think. call and it turned into a three-hour call. So yes, uh, that seems to now lately both here and on Seco uh, calls. <laughs> That's the most ogm -y thing we do. <laughs> well, just keep in mind medical. Oh, we, we need to end this. We need to end this. I know. That's no, 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 the no, thing. No, I need just to have one thing. two one tasks one thing. and a meal to get before Medicox. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're going to try to do more harvesting at Medicox. Um, anyway. Yay. All right. Yay. Thanks, Thanks all. Everybody. Hugs to everybody. This is so positive. <clears throat> it's just a lift every day. Yay. Until soon. Cheers. <laughs>